The Last of Us Part II is a masterpiece worthy of its predecessor. But while Part II is a thrilling adventure, it still makes time for a stunning, nuanced exploration of the strength and fragility of the human spirit. Hey. Uh, look, last night I was, uh, I was drinking too much. Sure. I'm trying to say I'm sorry. Made you some sandwiches. Okay. Your steak. Well, uh, you be safe out there. Yep. I appreciate that. What you got there? Bigot sandwiches. Mm. Smells good. The Last of Us Part Two is a masterpiece worthy of its predecessor. Bigot sandwiches. Masterpiece worthy of its predecessor. Bigot sandwiches. Masterpiece. Bigot, 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 bigot. Masterpiece. Everybody and welcome back. So we've been getting a lot of good and bad, but mostly good feedback from our last uh, Last of Us Part Two uh, rant video. And people have been asking me to do a follow-up video ever since the game came out. And for me, for a while, we pretty much said everything that we wanted to say in that video because I mean we covered so much stuff. It is two hours long and. The only big criticism I got about that video was that it was two hours long, but to me that seems like a silly criticism because, again, there was so much stuff that we had to discuss and there was just so much, like, just craziness to the situation and so much information that we had to share that it just ended up being that long because of all the stuff that was out there. Um, but now that the game's come out, people are asking me, you know, has, has my opinion changed? Uh, what do I think now? My opinion has not changed whatsoever. It's the exact same before the game came out. And uh, I think people that kind of avoided the leaks are now starting to see things come to fruition. They're starting to regret, you know, avoiding the leaks. Uh, it's one of those situations where I usually don't condone leaks, but in this situation, I'm kind of glad it got leaked. So I'm joined back with uh, the same dudes from last time. What's up, everybody? Hello. What up? I'm not, I'm not we're back! <laughs> oh, we're fucking back! Yes, Just, I was worried back. Justice was gonna be like, "Fuck you, naughty dog!" <laughs> like the last, like in the oh, last oh, video. Do, do you want me to? Oh, no, I'm not gonna. Do we want to redo that now? We, yeah, why don't you no, just kill my ears again? <laughs> there, there it is. There it is. Look, I don't, I don't, I don't hate my dog as a whole. I mainly hate certain people, mainly Neil Cuckman. That's his name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That's his name. Or drunken. <laughs> yeah. Drunk. My opinion hasn't changed whatsoever since the game came out. In fact, it's even more solidified after the game came out. And the, lots of people have been sending me this video in particular from uh, Cosmonaut Variety Hour. And as soon as I even saw the title of this video, I was like... Oh, boy. Uh, I kind of want to do a video response to this. So I've seen bits and pieces of it. I haven't watched through the whole thing from beginning to end, but I have seen bits and pieces of it. But before we start, I just want to say I love Cosmonaut Variety Hour. I think he's a great YouTuber. He makes some quality videos. Most of his reviews are fucking on point. I mean, he hits the nail on the head pretty often. But, you know, there are some occasions where he doesn't, and that's because, you know, he's sharing his opinion on things, which is totally fine. Um, so, no matter what happens after this, I'm still going to be a fan of his. Uh, I just wanted to sort of give my perspective on this, and hopefully this will help explain, you know, why people strongly dislike the game. And, hey, Cosmonaut, or AK and Marcus, if you ever end up watching this, which I don't know if you will or not, but... If you do, maybe this will give you some more perspective as to why people were so angry about this whole situation. But um, let's just reiterate: we, we're not in any way saying that we hate you. We're just saying no, no. 
Yeah, this is by no means a attack video or like a gotcha video or anything like that. No, I'm still a fan of his. Uh, I still will be after this. This is just simply explaining why people are angry because it, for me, it sounds like you may just not understand why people are angry about the storyline in The he Last does, of Us 2. He doesn't get the full context of how we all feel. Or like most of the, the general audience feels about the game. Oh no, 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 no! I'm certain. No, I get the feeling that if he does see this, he'll he'll be he'll be like, well, it is their own, well, it is their own opinion, and opinions are subjective. Whereas if it's Neil Drunkman that watches this, he'll probably he'll probably want to backlash us. Oh, he'll he'll copyright and flag the video because he can't stand criticism. <laughs> nope. Yeah. I mean, we explained that in the last video too. Oh like, yeah. Like everybody else we'll, in the entire. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll probably get in. We'll probably get into that again later on in this video but for right now let's josh mm -hmm. what do you want to start off with can i just say like <laughs> dude really the title. <laughs> really come there on there we go we're starting off with the title that, that's, like, there just go. Dumb. we just <laughs> think <laughs> differently dumb. Appar apparently everybody is dumb who hates this guy apparently we're dumb guys we hate this apparently guy. we're all stupid dumb. in here so you guys apparently. don't know what you're talking about <laughs> apparently <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about I just, Apparently. I hate when people are like, hey, if you guys don't like this, then you're stupid. It's like, no. We just, I mean. I could, there's legitimate I mean, reasons that people don't like five this. Of, uh, the five of us, you can perceive us as dumb and everything, but we're not dumb when it comes to stuff like this. We've been playing games like all our lives. Mm-hmm. So I think I we mean, get, so I think, so this, I think this it's pretty been... easy for us to tell what's good and what's bad. Exactly. Right. This has been <clears> happening for a long time, though. We've been dealing with this for as long as it's been around i was we've been dealing with this for so long where people get upset if we don't like this or this that <laughs> sexist you know all that crap it's been you're an ist you're so an ism long. you're you're, you're phobic you're of this blah blah blah, blah, blah. it's just it, especially it's when just, it comes to today's society opinion. that really heavily implies it's like, such a dumb every... way to dismiss criticism when you have like no there's a legitimate reason why i'm upset yeah I'm just dismissing it i mean that you know heck i'll say That's... this right now all all of us here, I guarantee you, Josh probably doesn't like something I like. You know, there's certain things we probably don't agree on. I guarantee you, there's certain things I like that he doesn't like. You know, it, everyone has their opinions on certain things they like and certain things they don't like. It's just but I don't think I'm better of a person or smarter than you guys because yeah. I don't I don't share your opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, that's just the way I, I agree. I, I agree too. I, I don't like the fact that Logan has long hair because it makes him look like Ozzy Osbourne's son. But that doesn't mean I think I'm better than him. It totally means that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, that doesn't mean I think. Yeah. I'm, by the way, Logan, I'm just kidding. I was just wanting to use an example. But I don't think in any way I'm better than anybody here. But yeah, yeah, just uh, forewarning you guys, I'm probably going to be pausing this quite a bit because, uh, you know, it's 20 minutes long, but I'm sure he covers a lot of points, and, um, yeah. you know, I don't want to well, skip points over that, any. Well, there are a few points here and there that we might agree with, but I guess... Well, for sure, most... yeah. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen there's some parts like that we, that we don't agree with. That's And if it turns out to be mostly stuff that we do agree with, but the stuff we don't agree with turns out to be, like, more major, like, very major points, then... Either way works. It's like we're just voicing our opinions here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this an opinion just like yours? But I think the difference with us is uh, I would never in my entire life make a title like that. <laughs> I don't know. Like, dumb, I honestly like wonder this. if he's doing this to, like, get a rise out of people, like, out of the haters of this game, or if he's just being funny. I, I mean, know. here's the thing. Here's the thing. People in one. this day and age rely on political correctness. Wouldn't. But I'm just, and I think political correctness has gotten way too out of hand, but wouldn't political correctness involve, like, letting people speak their mind? See, what I'm, what this should be renamed as is, first of all, get rid of this part, at least, and then say, why hmm. I don't think The Last of Us 2 isn't that bad. Hmm. That's a more, that's a more, you know, opinion-based title where, hey, yeah, this is what I think. Yeah, if you guys don't agree with me, that's fine. This is more of a... If you guys don't agree with me, you're dumb. It's like, again, I don't know if he's just trying to be funny or whatever, but either way, I just don't think it's a good idea to make a title like that. Well, uh, you guys ready for this? Yeah. Let's do it. I think, I think so. Logan, are you, are you good? You haven't been saying much. Um, play it. I want to scream at this person. <laughs> okay, he's okay. ready to go. All right, here Whoa. we go. Three, two, one. So after a few days, yeah. I have finally beaten The Last of Us Part 2. 
And did I enjoy it? Well, not the whole time. I mean, I should... So far, I I like that. He's kind of taking a neutral approach to it. I love how he I, I, I love how he emphasizes not mean. the whole time. That make, that already yeah. makes me kind of giggle yeah. a little bit. So far, a good start. <laughs> yeah. Point out that yeah. I didn't even really like the first game all that much. I think that game has a ten out of ten story with six out of ten gameplay. I mean, okay, that, mm, that, that, well, well, the gameplay was. I mean, I, I I didn't play the game. Me I'll, I I'll, I'll respect that. I don't think the gameplay is anything like groundbreaking from the first game. It really game. isn't. It's very basic. I feel like it's a well, very yeah. basic game. It gets the job it's done, really. Yeah. It's very basic, but at the same time, so he, to me, he's so kind of right on the, the rating on that part, on the gameplay I part. I mean, 10, 10 out of 10 for the, for the, the story, which... Is so that's that is that story that makes sense? I, I agree with the uh, 10 out of 10 story. It's a very unique story, it's a very emotional story. Definitely. And you know, the reason why I like the story is because, as dark and depressing as it is, you still have your upbeat moments and hopeful moments and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Whereas in this game, the entire time is just dark, depressing, sadness. Like, you guys remember from the first game that giraffe scene when oh, uh, yeah. you always see those yeah, giraffes? I there's yeah. nothing I, like I, that I in the it. second game. And also, or, or, I forgot to mention, so I actually have watched the, I think there was a uh, video by NK Fire and Ice, I think is the YouTube channel name, where he uploaded every single cutscene from The Last of Us 2. So I've seen the entire story, okay, from start to finish, just yeah. full disclosure. Um, so for those of you that are like, oh, you haven't even played the game, you haven't watched the whole story, you don't know what you're talking about, I pretty much have played it just not with a physical controller which we'll get into more detail with that later on why i think that's a dumb criticism but Watch technically the speaking that's good enough i've seen the whole story of watching the, the entire game. cut cinematic it's that's pretty solid right there yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it gives you the entirety of the story basically like what you're saying right. the last of us two is that like they didn't even do what they did with the last of us part one which is give us moments of hope and then immediately rip it away from us they rip it away from us like one minute later. There, I mean, there are some flashback scenes. Those those two guys, scene. they those two guys, uh, Joel and Ellie met in the city. Yeah, I mean there there was some uh, legitimate good moments in the story for the second game, and it's funny how the only good moments are with the uh, uh, Joel and Ellie's flashbacks. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was I said that is like I feel there were some flashbacks that were pretty nice, like the one where Ellie had her birthday. That was pretty nice. That's what yeah. pisses me off is like the potential for a great story it's there it's right there they just mm, they missed the landing so hard yeah i i actually i actually said this like obviously the game obviously the game and this is pretty and this is i'd say this i say this i use this phrase a lot but it's pretty par for the course when you're talking about a juggernaut like naughty dog um obviously the game had the potential to be a great game it had all the building blocks that it needed right. it's just it's just that's the way they were put everything. together if that's where it, that's where they went wrong but the way they is, the way they structured it was way off base, in my opinion. What you said once, Justice, it's the execution. Mm -hmm. That is the exactly. It, it was the exactly. execution. The way they just put the blocks together. Right. That's what went wrong. They probably did a few. They probably put a few fitting blocks here and there, but for the most part, it's it's just. But for the most part, they just like it's as if they just got a person that's never put building blocks together at all, like never constructed anything, and just. Just went for it. They just, just went, went whatever. They, they, there you go. Just wing it, okay? Just wing it. Yeah. But I still think a six out of ten gameplay for the first game. I mean, I can I can see where he's coming from with that. I don't necessarily disagree with that or anything. I mean, it got the the gameplay got the job done in the first game. Again, it wasn't anything groundbreaking. I thought it was fine. I didn't. I wasn't a huge fan of the constant ladder puzzles. <laughs> From the first game. And there's also a fact that sometimes when it came down to finding <laughs> hidden stuff, it seemed a bit like, like I mean, I know this is how it's supposed to do. I know this is pretty much how it's supposed to be, but you actually felt like finding hidden stuff, like books or stuff like that, that would help improve your abilities. It's like one part you have to look in a house, and it's and it's in a fucking and it's in a fucking attic that you have to pull the ladder down. Right. Who would I even think to look there? For me, a sequel back has to, to justify why it exists. Did this story need to be continued? No. Is the second game no. really worth it? Really. That's what we're going to talk about today. As usual, I'm going to start with non-spoiler stuff and then warn you guys for spoilers later. So let's start with the only non-spoiler aspects, the gameplay. 
My relationship okay, that with right the there, gameplay and that was cool. What, I, what we just saw there. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, throwing that like just throwing a smoke bomb. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple <laughs> new uh, weapons but, here and there. But from what I just see. From, if I could just say this, looking from there, right there, it just looked like the gameplay itself. And I know he's talking about it right now, so I apologize for interrupting people. That was but, in the obvious, but, sir. It's like <laughs> it just looks pretty ordinary for the last of us you know it just looks the same mm -hmm. that's what i mean like it's, i've been wanting to bring we'll that up is that. the gameplay we'll virtually looks it. the same from the yeah. first game for me it's like they, it they, they very much took a hey if it ain't broke don't fix yeah. it type of approach process of throwing and and i can see right now the health bar and stuff like that it all just looks the same as the last of us part one for the most part I was gonna say that, but then I was, but then I was trying to say like, we'll get more into that as the video continues. Ooh, but there's a jump button right now. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's my like, god. That's very groundbreak. Very groundbreaking. It's ground game yeah, play. yeah, it's groundbreaking. Oh my so god. So innovative. Oh my god. It's like I, Infinity I, Ward's I fish know. AI from Call of Duty Ghost. It's so it's groundbreaking. Oh god. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Aspects. The gameplay. My relationship with the yeah. gameplay in The Last of Us Two is very strange. For the first quarter of the game, I was not having fun at all. The game did not really challenge me, and most <laughs> of what you do is walk around in a semi-open area looting cupboards and occasionally sneaking past zombies. Opening drawers and unlocking safes is not gameplay. The safes are honestly the most irritating things in the game. The combinations are always located in the room right next to them, so they're really not that hard to find. And if they're not hard to find, then just let me open the treasure chest without having to unlock it. This mechanic exists to waste my time and make me feel like I earned the loot. It really is the most shallow type of puzzle that this game has to offer, and I am saying puzzle very loosely. Why do so many developers feel the need to put in, like, a worthless mechanic into their games? It's like, oh, let's waste the player's time by putting in this pointless minigame. I mean, yeah. just, just do what they did with The Last of Us Part 1 and make us just find the combination and... And then we find it, we go back to the safe, and guess what? We can automatically open it. We don't, we, we just open it. Yeah, just <laughs> like, it let us out. find Ooh. the combination and then go over to the safe, press a button, and it opens. Like, I mean, here's the thing you want to, you want to make us try to figure out, you want to make us try to like figure out or put in the combination to a safe, leave that, leave stuff like that to like GTA, where it actually would be relevant. Because yeah. like, we're, we're trying to fend off against and because we're trying to fend up against enemies while trying to steal their stuff we're not just trying to just collect loot that really nobody has any claim to for me it just seems like a mundane thing that doesn't need to be there so yeah i it agree it's pretty mundane puzzles in this game usually revolve around ropes last of us one had a dozen ladder puzzles and this one decided to shake things up Sorry ladders, ropes are my new best friends. But ropes aren't as prevalent as the ladders, and they aren't really as annoying, mostly because the ropes are used differently every time. You can get kind of creative with how you use them, and the rope physics kind of stop the puzzles from being annoying. Now while the I mean, it's an interesting feature, but it's not like a huge, like, jump in terms of, you know, new gameplay features. It's like, there's a rope now, you can climb it. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just seems like some. I mean, it just kind of seems like something you do in Uncharted. Which, yeah, I, I was. Mean, with, yeah, in the for, in the fourth oh, game, yeah. the grappling hook rope actually it's actually pretty cool. That I feel like is more groundbreaking than just throwing a rope over a a fucking yeah, I mean, like a light get, pole and climbing up. You get a freaking grappling hook, and for some reason, even though Uncharted is rated T for teen, you're just waiting for you. You tend to think like you're just gonna have some moment where you grapple some dude's body instead of a rock and like you just drag them off the cliff that sounds pretty sounds like a, that, was, <laughs> that, that, that sounds, sounds like a like batman a move right there yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah i am glad they uh they did away with the stupid ladders from the first game because that was something that did get pretty annoying yeah yeah but with all I... honesty, what I just said was like grappling some guy's body and killing them, bringing them down. I can already see Joel or Ellie doing that. You know, I can already see them doing that because it's a because in that world, it's survival of the fittest. One thing that got really annoying was the level design. This game has much bigger environments than the first game, and honestly, it's kind of overwhelming a lot of the time. There are a lot of situations where you'll get disoriented and lost and have no idea where to go. 
for the most part, they try to block off areas that you can't traverse with, like, vines and shit, but it's still really hard to tell where the game wants bottom. you to go. And yes, you can turn on a waypoint setting that'll tell you where to go, but that's not really an excuse. If the developers added that setting knowing that you're gonna get lost sometimes, then it's on them to just make the layout of these areas less confusing. I think in it See, for me, this is why I feel like they should have honestly made this game, like, I thought, when I first heard it was announced and you were going to be in Seattle most of the time, I honestly thought it was going to be, like, an open world type of game. Mm -hmm. Which, looking at this now, I kind of think that they should have done that instead, instead of making a linear game. Yeah. Like, I know so many games are trying to be open world now and stuff, but I really think a game like last of us where it is open world and you can go around collect stuff maybe even do some side quests or something like that not only could it like it extend the longevity of the game because you have all these different ways you can play and all these different areas you can go to and because that that's really my only major complaint with the first game is that if you play through it multiple times nothing changes it's the same game mm -hmm. you know, versus an yeah. open world game where you can pretty much do whatever you want you know, everyone's experience yeah. is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I could just point this out, of the two, if I can listen to the conversation, but like that game was linear, but at the same time, it also had like side quests, so it so it involved long aspects, and it was a pretty big environment. It wasn't a game that I've seen videos of where it's like you just you, you have no side quests, you're just focused on the main story the whole time, like literally the whole time, and really there's. There's no reason to go around. There's hardly any reason to go around exploring because you won't find much, if anything at all. Whereas with the Evil Within Two, you can you can find it. You can find a lot of things, and there are side quests that can lead you to new weapons, uh, new ability upgrades, stuff like that. And I feel like they could have done. And I feel like if they if they combine the two aspects together, like maybe make the game linear, but at the same time have some sort of open world aspect, like side quests. And maybe make it a bit more open world than it was. The game would probably the game would probably have done better. Yeah, I think it would have scored even higher than it is, even for the yeah. audience's reviews. But mm. <laughs> that's still kind of besides the point, though. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Let's see what else. Yes. <laughs> Every wide open area, I got confused. So far, though, this guy does have good points. I'm either really stupid or the levels are confusing. So and since I refuse to accept any of my mistakes, I'm gonna go ahead and blame the video game this time. Now between, I do think <laughs> it's kind of the developer's fault for making the levels so convoluted. Mm -hmm. Plus, they they decided to like increase all of the vegetation and stuff in the world by like tenfold, so it makes it even harder to see where you're supposed to go. Because like, yep. doesn't this game only take place four years after the first game? Why is three. like three or four years? Why why is there so much more like vegetation around than in the first game? <laughs> like a significantly <laughs> yeah. amount more. I think it takes place about three years after the first game because if I'm not mistaken, like Ellie's about seventeen years old in this game. I'm pretty Somewhere sure she's eighteen. Well, either way, it's like and it's like I mean, sure. I mean granted, yes, the fucking for all we know, like some vegetation would probably have gotten extremely wild, but for the most part, it's like you wouldn't expect there to be like they were in like some sort of kitchen or a greenhouse or whatever, there was just grass grass i don't think it would that i don't think it would have been that extreme for that amount that much amount of grass to grow like that it would not take five or six years for it to just grow through the concrete it would take if i had to guess probably decades about like a de a decades <laughs> decades to literally grow through buildings like i'm just thinking to myself like there must be like some high amounts of like radiation or something or whatever it just rained a shit ton but that's besides yeah. the point like that's not even a huge deal like yeah. that's something that i could even look past so it's it's not yeah, here nor true. there it's just one of those things where it's just like that's kind of bizarre well, exploration there are combat the segments and this is where the, the game boss. really saved itself for me to put it simply murder never felt so good now, when I started playing the game, I was playing on the medium difficulty because I wanted to beat the game fast and get this review out, but I got really bored. So I turned the difficulty up to the highest setting and it was like night and day. Before I could just run and gun like I was playing Doom and there was no tension whatsoever, but the highest difficulty really feels like the true Last of Us experience. Ellie dies so fucking fast and ammo is so scarce that you really have to use every tool at your disposal to survive. 
bottles become more valuable as they're more common than ammo and they can net you a kill if you use them right. The game seriously turns into Metal Gear Solid on this difficulty. I'm one of the few people who like when stealth is done well in video games and the stealth and I mean, who doesn't like when stealth is done well in video games? <laughs> Right? <laughs> like, you I know mean, what, guys? Let me tell you something. I, I love it when stealth is done bad in video games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I love I love it when when if stealth is, that stealth oh, is done so bad, you have to MLG that shit for it to be successful. <laughs> like GTA, for example. That's like a perfect No, example. Thief! No, Fucking not that. Thief! Oh, Thief? Yeah, I was gonna. The if, it, of the game. if Thief's stealth system was so fucking difficult, it was too easy to get caught. Oh, that's I was true. Gonna, I, was gonna, I, wanted I to played point out that whole that game, and I fucking. And I liked the game to be honest. It wasn't bad, but I just hated the stealth system. It was like just so complicated. One thing he said earlier. Isn't it a good thing to have a game to play like Doom? Essentially, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's you fun to kill shit it. in games. Yeah, I don't know if it if it's like if you want to have like a Doom like experience while playing a game like The Last of Us where it's grounded in realism and stuff. But I think in terms of like combat, Doom combat, you know, that's honestly what every shooter should strive to be. Exactly. Dude, I just do. nonstop chaos. No fun. I mean, people, you, from what you all can see and from what we saw is that we saw the combat in this game. That that takes that that makes. Last of Us 1's combat was freaking brutal. This game takes that to a whole new level, and I like it. It really that. does. Dude, you throw a brick at someone, there's just splatters of blood. And get when Ellie get that in the face with a pipe, oh my god, I thought it, his face was destroyed. Yeah, I mean, like, the shit. animations look decent. Yeah. does not fuck around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, was gonna, I wanted to point out something real quick, because uh, you guys were talking about what we were at, like what timeline we're in. And it seems to, what this is what I'm looking at here. It says it takes place, which is five five years after the first game, and 26 years after the initial outbreak. So supposedly Ellie is now is 19 in the second game, and Joel is like in his early to mid 50 now in the second game. I think he was already in. I think he was already in his early. I think he was already in his early 50s in the first game. So he's he's got to be in like his late 50s now. Yeah. Something like that. He's made to gray and be in his early fifties. <laughs> yeah, he's seen some shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay, they say stress. They say stress can cause gray hairs, and he he has no choice but to live a stressful life. I mean, he's got oh, yeah, absolutely definitely. no choice. Yeah, in this he lost game, he's lucky. Really really near, the enemy near, AI near, makes near, things near. super unpredictable too. Sometimes an enemy will cry out if you jump at them with an axe, and sometimes they don't. You may do the exact same route the exact same <laughs> way, but sometimes the AI is just going to do something completely different, and that's kind of cool. They really do feel more unique because they act like real people. If you shoot from a hiding spot, they'll call out the exact place you shot from. People clown on the fact that the NPCs shout each other's names, but I actually kind of like it. It adds another level of realism, and other games have done it before. However, I think it is really silly that there are only like 10 enemy character models. If you're gonna painstakingly name every NPC, at least make them look different. I also heard there's only like a dozen ish or so names that enemies use to call out. So it's not like there's a huge variety there, anyways. <laughs> Division uh, flashbacks. I did not know they only used 10 character models okay, total for Logan, NPC you enemies. Division flashbacks, please explain. Oh no, there's a line that where. Uh... An enemy will say, Alex has been hit! Alex has been hit! <laughs> so you've been and hit! you'll hear that over <laughs> so and over and over and over Alex again. I know, it's like, ah, half the people's <laughs> names in the world are named Alex. <laughs> Everyone knew you were Alex. Name Alex I didn't know. <laughs> no, seriously, nope, nobody, nobody will know what I, I hear what you're saying. Though. You killed Alex the 27th. <laughs> <laughs> you killed Alex the 250th. God damn it! The final boss is I heard yeah, one of them they, uh, they, yells they, out something they, like, "Oh no, you killed, killed you killed Alex. Kathy. She was pregnant." It's like, and then you look at her bottle, and she's like super skinny. You're like, "Yeah, about that." <laughs> Did she like just get pregnant, or was she like nine months pregnant? Because this don't look nine months. <laughs> <laughs> she probably must have. She might. She might have been told that day, and then she went out and then 
I know the girl had me so much for that. Well, if you're pregnant, want... why are you out in the in the middle it's, of? Why are why are why are you out and about and not like in a place uh, where know. you need to just rest? Why are you out in the apocalypse? Why aren't you in the safe the area? Lodge, the, the logic yeah. in that alone are you just gonna like rub my head? How are you gonna defend yourself? How are you gonna defend yourself against against the cordyceps zombies and and any survive and any crazed survivors? You gotta just have morning sickness all over them. Uh, I need to stop thinking about the sore. My brain's hurting. Ugh. Well, I mean, she it is bad. So, <laughs> anyway, she, she was just anyway, Once a fight hey, does break out, the gunplay is explosive and heavy hitting. The guns really feel good in this game, and it felt like I was actually in a life or death gunfight. Whenever I saw a group of humans, I got super excited to try and find an ideal route for taking everybody out while conserving as much ammo as possible. I used the guns so infrequently that it felt really good whenever I was left with no choice but to tap into my ammo and just go crazy on people. However, the zombie fights were still kind of hit or miss for me, even on the higher difficulty. Their AI is kind of bad, and yeah, I get they're zombies, but most of the time you don't have to think too hard to get past them. And while I got really excited for each encounter with the humans, I felt equal amounts of dread whenever I heard zombies nearby. I mean, with the... Uh, so talking about the whole weapons thing, I mean, the gunplay looks the exact same as the first game. Mm-hmm. It doesn't yeah. look all that different. I mean, yeah, yeah there, there's some new weapons here, and then, like, you got the silenced pistol and the carbine and stuff, but other than that, it's... It looks pretty much the same. And I've seen lots of gameplay. It pretty much looks the same as the first. I will tell you this. Those were clickers, right? Mm -hmm. Those looked like clickers, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they actually looked a bit more menacing than they did in the original game. They looked, they look at least a bit more menacing because they, they look like they have much. They look like they have a bit more fungal growth and everything. And also, I can see that one has blood on its hands. Yeah. Well, yeah. But it's, but it's like hands are like ex exceptionally bloody, so it's like obviously it just killed someone recently. Which, you know, like, it, it, it's just stink because you have, you know, this amazing production quality and then it it does feel like a lot of the developers got screwed over by Neil Cuckman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people, if I could just point this out, more than 70%, and I know we talked about this in the last video, but more than 70% of the business left, weren't fired, they left because of this game. Mm -hmm. all need to keep, all people need to keep people need to back yeah illegally exactly <laughs> yeah exactly and we we also discussed that in the last video that is a federal crime you can, yep. if you're a business owner and you're if you're a business owner or a manager or whatever if you're the one in charge of their payroll and you're doing shit like that for no good reason you could end up not only could you lose your job you could end up in federal prison and if things get really bad you could have, the whole company could have been shut down I still think this will be Naughty Dog's downfall, this game alone, or a lead to its downfall. But Anthony, and... the game still so well, so that means it's good. You don't know what you're oh, talking yeah. about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people people are like, some people have been pointing out to me, like, ah, you're wrong, the game's so well. I'm like, well, and? That doesn't mean anything. Like, that's not an argument. That doesn't mean it's good. That's like saying the Transformers movies are amazing because they make lots of money. <laughs> That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That's like saying. <laughs> that's like good, saying they have so many explosions. Excuse me. Well, Captain Marvel made over a billion dollars, so ergo, it's good. Like, no, it's no. not. No, that was not. I'm, sure, the money. I'm pretty sure most of that money was on first day release sales. Pro yeah, exactly. it, it, it's yeah. all about branding, and that's all it is. It's like people yeah, love they Naughty it Dog. Heavily. People love yeah. The Last yeah. of Us game, so of course they're gonna. Plus, I hate to break it to you guys, but most gamers don't even watch like online videos about games they just hear about a sequel and they go oh cool I like the first game i'll get the second one you know what i mean yeah they don't, they don't watch you know rant videos or leaks or anything like that they most gamers don't they just go mm -hmm. "Ooh, i like the first game i'll get the second one without even like watching trailers or anything they'll just buy it That's yeah i mean reality i mean mm -hmm. like i mean neil drunkman by the fact that he keeps supporting this game and saying that, oh man, we're wrong and everything. Yeah. I'm sorry for being graphic, but he's basically just had, for those of us that disagree, which is most of us, um, he's basically just having a dick measuring contest with us saying like his, saying like he's got a bigger Johnson than the rest of us do. He's saying he's right because he's 
probably because he's some sort of big businessman and <laughs> like and but like here you might here's the thing neil you might as well be sending us a dick pic but here's the thing objects in mirror are closer than they appear sir like we've never seen somebody use a fish eye lens before yeah your penis like, you i think he has the biggest dick in the room thank you <laughs> yeah. Get metaphorically speaking straight. sure yes we're being yep. metaphorical obviously we're being meta i'm being metaphorical don't if you dare do that to us we are gonna sue you we will we're gonna sue you still i don't want to go hit or miss for me even on the higher difficulty their ai is kind of bad and blind. yeah i get their zombies do, but most of the time you don't have to think too hard to get past them and while I got really excited for each again. encounter with the clicker, I feel like I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but like, just from looking at this, clickers from the first game seemed more threatening than they do in this game. A little, yeah. a little bit. I mean, I don't know how much damage uh, Ellie might have done to that first clicker that we saw that we saw her kill, but she just actually she pulled what Joel didn't do and just stabbed her right in the throat with a shiv. Yeah, like, in the first game, there's only certain ways you could kill a clicker. Like, you could not directly engage with a clicker in the first game, otherwise it was instant death. But in this game, it feels like you can just take on a group of them and get by them just fine. Whereas in the first game, yeah, I mean, whenever I saw a group of clickers, I was like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. No. Hell no, I'm going over there. I'm going around, thank you. If you have a melee weapon, you can actually fight. I actually managed to punch a clicker to death once. That was, that was amazing. You're That's not awesome. satisfying when you figure out a way to, like, beat it with your own hands. I actually punch a clicker. Shoot. I mean, they said it was ineffective. They didn't work. But That's it, like it, punching a lion. Like, Die, bitch. <laughs> Weapon broke, and then they were stunned, and I just I just started laying into them with my fist. <laughs> I, I would have loved to see gameplay video of that. Quickly, because there were runners everywhere. Ten out of ten gameplay. I get to punch a clicker to death. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. You can also kill them, you know, using uh, those uh, fire grenades or Molotovs, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we'll see any bloaters. Bloaters, uh, I yeah, I'm pretty remember. sure they're in the second game. Yeah, they are actually. I just remember better, they are. They better be because they were actually. They better be because they were actually an. They were, they were actually an interesting boss. There was only a couple of them in the first game too, which is why I really liked them because they were there were so few and so sparse that when they did show up, you're like, oh shit, this is gonna be hard. Mm-hmm. And if yeah, like a mini like a mini boss hard. fight basically. Also, yeah, how how many times like... do you guys think that? Uh, that gamers deliberately let Abby get killed by a bloater. <laughs> um, way too many times. I'm it, betting. Would it count? Would it count times. for anything if I were to say I'd probably do the same thing? I mean, I think we all would. But well, we'll we'll get to that later. We're jumping ahead. Yeah. Humans, Woo. I felt equal amounts of dread whenever I heard zombies nearby. However, you're a the terrible shot. Thing is that if you're good enough, you can just melee <laughs> I don't even the zombies know and yeah. save some ammo. Two There's even this shot. mini boss that I had to fight later on, and I didn't really have any ammo to spare, so I found out that I could just beat the <laughs> shit out of him with my bare hands. What the fuck is that? What are you talking about? You have ammo. Like I know you pointed out, but dude, you have a fucking gun right here. Fucking shoot it instead of punching it. <laughs> what the fuck is that thing? That doesn't even look like a clicker. I can't tell what that is. It looks like a rock monster. It's, it's the thing from Fantastic Four. It's his ugly cousin. <laughs> yeah, it's a skinny gray version of the thing. Or, or it's that ugly looking. Too, it's it's like it's some sort of fungus cordyceps ninja. Yeah. Yeah. This <laughs> thing is fucking like I don't even know what this thing is. It's sticking out up here. What the <laughs> is hell that is... supposed to be its head? its head? I was gonna say, is, is this its head? neck oh, right here? What is this? <laughs> oh, that is its neck. That is that is its neck. Ron and I didn't really have any ammo to spare, so I found out that I could just beat the shit out of him with. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, okay. Better, better look at it. Ooh. Oh there we my go. God, that is terrifying. That is that, that, that honestly that that's legitimately right there. That, that looks that looks floater. like a locust. Completely. That must be the phase between That does look floor. like a naked locust. <laughs> that looks like a locust from Gears of War. Oh man. It does. It's terrifying looking. Actually, yeah, wait, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's like from the last part one, the head. stalkers which are like 
free clickers, as as I... they look like they were turning into locusts from Gears of War. Mm hmm. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if that's where they got some of their uh, crossovers. I dodged his counterattacks. That was pretty fun. I was actually glad that I got to do that. But I, I still know. wish that there were less zombies and more humans, which is sad because this is a zombie game. Um, I mean, yeah, if, point, as long as you do the out. zombies well, I mean, I think that that's fine. I think that you should use like the zombie mini bosses and boss fights sparingly, not too often. But that's just me. I mean, if it's something like clickers, which are kind of a boss thing, then you should huh. have them. You should make it to where it's a stealth sequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, clickers from what we've seen, they from what we've seen, they they react to the slightest noise. Yep. Now maybe I'm a masochist, but I actually really did enjoy restarting whenever I didn't nail my run the way I wanted to. Whenever I made it through an area, but I ended up using way too much ammo, I ended up restarting because I kind of had to. You only got one bullet every once in a while. Personally, this is how I like playing games, but if this isn't for you, then don't play on the highest difficulty. It's just going to hurt your feelings. I mean, I feel like if I'm out of ammo and, the whole game hurts and like my feelings. everything... What's the, point? <laughs> the game hurt everyone's feelings. What are you talking about? Yeah. I feel like if I'm out of ammo for everything and I'm playing on the highest difficulty, I'd either just be like, okay, I'll try to figure this out. If I get past this area, cool. If not, then I'll just die and respawn, whatever. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't just respawn right away. Right, I'd yeah. first try to figure it out, and then if I couldn't, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll die and then respawn. You know? Yeah, I mean, even if you can't figure out how to make it through without any ammo and just, like, yeah. your melee weapon miss, or, God forbid, Ellie's switchblade, it's like, you could still maybe come up with strategies before you die to, yeah. that will help you. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. far, there's nothing that, like, I strongly disagree with him yet, so... I mean, there's yeah, a few things not... that I'm not quite, like, online with, but for the most part, I don't have any major problems with this yet. But I'm sure mm -hmm. he yeah, did say that spoilers are coming, so... We'll, yeah. we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. If I was scoring the combat on its own, I would say on the hardest difficulty, I got, like, an 8 out of 10 experience out of that. But on medium, okay. I was bored out of my fucking mind, and it was not an experience <laughs> that I would like to relive. I understand that not everybody is a masochistic gamer like me, and some people just want to get through the story, and they don't care about the gameplay that much. But I played it on the hardest difficulty, yeah. and I really only liked it because I was on the hardest difficulty, so I think that's worth noting. So anyway, now we got to talk about the real... Oh boy, so... Story Any... time, yeah. kids. Ellie, no smokes. one is as masochistic as you. I call bullshit on that one, bud. I mean, <laughs> everyone plays differently, but for me, it's like, if I'm enjoying the gameplay, I don't just try to rush through it and see what happens with the rest of the story. You want to you wanna enjoy the full equally, experience by again. taking your time. I want like, to get my money's worth, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, I paid $60 for around. this shit. Oh, I, I, wow. I, I, sometimes I'm even more than that. <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes. Yeah, you, you like to take a look around and see like all the, the areas and how it looks like oh that looks great. Oh that looks cool, you know? Everybody likes to look around every now and again. Oh I can it's... hang that person from up there. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Like what I, have tendency, <laughs> I do have a tendency to every now and then at least try to like whatever. I'll, I'll bring up a game me, I try in to, a like, little bit. I try to like get every nook and cranny, at least a few of them here and there. So that way I can get some cool stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, yeah. usually what I try to do is, uh, especially early on, is, like, collect as much possible stuff as I can. That way, for the rest of the game, I'm all supplied up and ready to go. But that's, like, exploring every single solitary room and corner and everything, so. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, when I last was part one, I kept picking up parts, you know, because it's like, you, if you want to actually play the game effectively, you're going to need those to upgrade your weapons. I do think there are some people in in these types of games just want to rush through it to see what happens at the store so i do agree i mean i'm sure they exist i don't think those people well, should be doing do. that I, but way mm. what is because i was on the hardest difficulty so i think that's worth noting so anyway now we got to talk about the real meat and potatoes of this game the story the and story. you can't do that without spoiling so i'm going to spoil spoiler warning now. we already know them all <laughs> warning, don't yell at me everybody pretty much knows spoil them. it let's go Honestly, the Not story of this game is a mixed bag. And uh, mm. 
Well, well you see, that's where you're wrong, sadly. Well, it I is, mean, he's not totally wrong. There are. He's not like, totally wrong, <clears throat> but it. Oh critics. God. <laughs> I would say yeah. that that's a bit of a overstatement. I, I think that's giving it too much credit. I would say it's a bad story with sprinkles of good moments. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like how the I would only. Put it. From what I've seen, the only good moments I kind of enjoyed were the flashbacks. Those were the only things I enjoyed. Notice how, like, one of the first clips he used in terms of when he said the story's a mixed bag is he used a clip from the flashback. It's like, just to solidify his point that the story isn't as bad as people say it is, but it is. Plus, like, you know what else? I don't know if he's going to show it here, but... I think he... So, if you guys look in the original uh, trailers for this game, you notice how they changed Joel's model? It's because they were... It, it's because they were doing like a market tricking kind of thing. They're wanting, they're really wanting us to get the game. But when we see the game and it doesn't, it shows the same clip, but like you can notice it's changed. We're like, why the hell did they feel the need to like trick us? Yeah, it's it's a fucked up thing to do because they tricked you into thinking that Joel's going to be in the game a lot more than he actually is. Because like in this exact oh. same trailer, his face is older. They're using the older model of Joel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, in the actual I, game, he's young. Oh, is it really? I didn't know that. So yeah. they basically what? did. So hey, they basically young. did false marketing false on life. us. Yeah, look right here. See that? A so little bit. He looks older than yeah. that. Yeah. Look at that, that's, and that's then look the at this. It's bullshit. Oh, wow. That Big is different. That is... Wow. That, no, dude, that that was another wow. one of the main reasons why it pissed me off. I'm like, man, they they really tricked a lot of players in the beginning of this game because they thought Joel was going to be in it for a while and then when they played it, they were like, are you serious right now? So they basically did a false marketing scheme on us just to get this damn game? Yeah, right there. That's, look at him. He looks, wow. look, at him. He looks, look at him. He looks like 10 years older. This and then this. It's, it, it's like... Older. Yeah, it's, it's night and day. I wonder... <laughs> oh, God. You know, we, we were mentioning... This is the only developer I've ever seen where they deliberately redesign a character model to make you think that something's going to happen when it actually doesn't. Especially when it's an integral part of the story. Like, they mm -hmm. literally tricked the... Because Naughty Dog isn't stupid. They know everyone loves Joel. So they're going to put this character model in all of the gameplay trailers and cutscenes to make you think... And screenshots. Large, a large chunk of the game is going to have this version of Joel when there isn't. Mm -mm. Okay, Josh, hang on. You said everyone loves Joel. I think we I think we found out recently on our own time that that's apparently not true. Mm -hmm. Well, not maybe not okay. everyone, but Lord's large gonna, majority. I'll let Josh explain that. He, he's later. a pretty iconic character <laughs> because of his story. And, I'll well. let Josh explain that here in a couple minutes or something like that's that. That's your warning. I'll let him Don't do yell it. at me. I'm gonna spoil it. Let's go. Oh, we're, Honestly, we 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 might yell. Yeah, we might just for well, warning. We don't yet. know yet. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll see. see. Look, okay, look, viewers, you won't have to worry about the. Beat. You probably won't have to worry about these guys yelling. You'll just have to worry about me with my rage. In oh no, they don't have to worry about you. Apparently, they'll have to worry about you, Logan, because I saw. Yeah. You're goddamn right. I saw oh, a snap. Of, uh, oh, comment. I, mean, I no, saw a certain yelling, comment. You won't be able to tell because you're so quiet. I saw a certain <laughs> comment in one of our video in that video we did. It just, you know. Oh yeah. That up, people, and I thought it was kind of dumb. You say you see why I but, said earlier that we actually are dumb, but we're not dumb when it comes to this. We're just dumb when it comes to each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get used to it. All right, Marcus. Let's see what you think of the story. I'll I'll hear you out. This game out, is brother. a mixed bag, and that's putting it lightly. There are aspects of this story that I absolutely love, and there are a lot of things that left me baffled. Truly okay. and utterly baffled on why they chose to do things the way that they did them. But my annoyance is mostly at the fact that people are mad at the wrong things in this game. Um... I, I hope, I hope he... Yeah, so, uh, so Justice, Ellie actually gets a tattoo to cover the bite mark that she has. Cause it's like a scar. How? How? I wait! How? I, didn't know that. I mean, I didn't think there'd be any any tattoo artists uh, still around. I don't know. I don't know how she got the tattoo. They put like ink on a stick and they hit it with a hammer. You wait. You want to know? Wait. You want to know some like in the dark Google. angle that it's at? It kind of looks. It kind of looks like the fucking grip to a katana. 
It does. It does. It really does. It, like, who's to say she didn't just wrap? Who's cool. to say she didn't just take off the roping of a katana? I have a katana over there in the corner. Who's to say she didn't just take off the the roping or whatever of a katana <laughs> of a katana grip and just wrap around? Yeah. yeah she, she like traced it on her arm and shit. <laughs> Which admittedly, like, that is how it went down. It's really good. Yeah. But no, pe- to say cool. people are getting mad at this game for the wrong reasons, I mean. I really hope he isn't referring I mean, I to The know. next clip in the, the video is basically one of those reasons why everyone got mad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, ne- the next clip he's about to show Logan. is probably. Right. We'll, we'll, I mean, we'll, I, we'll get to that. I hope Logan. you explain this. Let's see. At the wrong we'll get to that. in this He'll... game. A lot of people are just mad at the fact that Joel dies. No, we're not! No, 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 okay. no, 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 I'm no, taking, no, I'm no, taking, no. I'm taking the gloves off now. Yeah. Okay, whoa, 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 hold the phone. You are so Stop wrong pressing. about this, I'm pissed oh off. Oh my god. He, he specifically <sighs> says that he that he, say, he thinks that the fans are upset just specifically because Joel died. It's not. No. Hold up. Oh my hold god. Up. Hold up. It is not. I'm gonna let you guys explain this because I'm too pissed. It is. <laughs> I, I've been thinking about this in my head for a while. It is not just because Joel died. It is specifically we brought. I brought this up earlier. It was the execution of of the way death. things went. Yeah. It was how exactly. He died. This is exactly. It is this is one of those. Like, this is one of those bad building blocks I was talking about. Badly it's the same. You know, it's all about execution, and unfortunately, this execution. <laughs> With was a golf pretty club. poor, was pretty freaking poor. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I've seen I've seen all of the cutscenes mm-hmm. in the game. I even I even gave the game a fair chance because I'm like every mm-hmm. game deserves a chance. I saw everything leading up to Joel's death. How he dies makes mm-hmm. absolutely no sense because of the character that we know from the first game. Joel would never put himself in this type of position to begin with. You know he how just he gets. Trust strangers. You know That's how he gets ridiculous. in this position. He sees a group of people that he doesn't know, decides that he's going to help save them from infected, which is fine. But then he goes so far as to go into a house with them, not knowing any of these people, not knowing anything about them, and then telling him who both he and his brother's name. Joel is not stupid. He knows he's wanted by the Fireflies. He knows that they're gunning for him. Like, I, you know, you wouldn't even think there'd be any Fireflies left because of the military, and because of the fact that Joel took out every fi- almost every Firefly at that hospital at the end of the first game. But that's still even- it's still a major <laughs> plot hole because again, he would never put himself. He's been doing this thing for decades, right? For over twenty years, he's been surviving in this world. He knows how things work. To put him in that position, the way he got to that position, I just can't see him doing that. It didn't make sense. And then, and then it's the timing of it. You kill him mm-hmm. off two fucking hours into the game, and then you, and then you're gonna make me play these other people that I don't care about. I, I think you know. I don't want to bring this up because it's another thing we all hate. But it's basically the same issues we had with a certain other character's death. And a, a little franchise that we all love very much, <clears throat> Star Wars. Um, and uh, mm, the same scenario yeah. happens with I'm going to say the name. Luke well, you Skywalker guys love Star Wars. I haven't cared about it in a long time. I stopped watching it a long time but, ago. But please go ahead. It basically it wasn't the fact that Luke died while well, his death was a bit weird, but it was the execution of his death. It was the way it was done. That was the problem we all had with Luke's death. It wasn't the fact that he just straight up died. It was mainly the way they did it. And it's the same problem here with Joel. It's the execution. It's how he died. Like, simply... when, when he dies, he doesn't get any, like, monologue. He doesn't even say anything to Ellie, like, I love you or anything. Ellie doesn't say anything to Joel, like, Joel, I forgive you. Joel, I'm sorry. None of that. She's just like, Joel, fucking get up. And then he just dies. There's no, there's no closure. It's like, hey, I'm gonna save these people. Oh, I get shot in the leg. Oh God, help! Oh, I'm hurt. Oh God. Oh, shit. I'll get my head smashed in. Ellie, help! Okay, now it's just awkward for me to hear you. <laughs> 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 
crashed it. Don't oh, kill yourself over it. there. Is, is that your Joel voice? That is the worst thing ever. Plus, like, I'm not even trying. I'm not even trying. Or like, condescending, like Troy, Bra like Troy Baker. No, no look, <laughs> look, I'm, look, Nightmare, if I'm ever in need, if I'm ever making a game and I need Troy Baker in it, I'm not hiring you as an alternative. <laughs> I'm hiring the Lenore instead. Yeah, like Rick from Rick and Morty. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Morty, 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 we gotta get this. We gotta go on adventure. Morty, Morty, Morty. Viewers, I'm Morty. sorry. I, I did this. Um, Morty, we gotta go back in time to, to save Last of Us. We gotta go. We gotta go back in time to save Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, we gotta go save it. Go. Get the time machine. Go. We get gotta go machine. kill Neil Truckman. We gotta. Take we, gotta him go, out. we gotta go kill Abby. We gotta go kill Abby. <laughs> we gotta go kill Abby and save Joel. We gotta go uh. save Joel from Abby. Okay. Mm. I can't hear you, but that's the best. Oh, ju ju Justice is losing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can hear him. I can't stand you anymore. I'm Good sorry. <laughs> Let's just carry Don't worry, on. Justice. Before, let's just carry on before I have a hemorrhage. But, you know, again, oh, it's. Going. But can I just say too, like, getting your head smushed in with a golf club, that's just so comical. That's like, like, they were asking that scene to be memed. You know what I mean? Honestly, yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. like, it's almost, that's like something the Joker would do as a joke. Ma Marcus, a I'm gonna, Marcus, I'm gonna ask you a question. If you're watching this, I'm gonna ask you a question, Marcus. How many people were outraged that Lee from The Walking Dead died? Were you guys pissed off when Lee died from The Walking Dead? I was sad, but I liked his death because if it, it had, had meaning behind it, it had meaning. in it had a sense. Weight. You felt something. It, was executed. it, it had was meaning, executed and on top perfectly. of that, it was and on top of that, he was actually killed by. If I'm not mistaken, he was actually cheat, wasn't he? He was. He yeah, was bitten. Let's take uh, Red Dead Redemption Two. Okay, in the first two hours of the game, Arthur Morgan dies, and then you play the rest of the game as uh, Micah. I'm oh God. <laughs> Wait, you say it's Mike? Go to the tallest cliff in fucking New Austin, <laughs> the fuck that place no, called the West like, Elizabeth, I, I think, and jump that. off repeatedly. You know what I mean? It's, it's or... the same thing. It's like it's like in the first two hours of Red Dead Redemption Two, Arthur gets killed by a pig sitting on his face. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's stupid. It's there's no emotional weight to it. It's dumb. <laughs> But it's just I mean, like this. People, you know, it, it. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> what in the actual hell? He's screaming into like a. He's screaming to his pillow. He, he's, he's going yeah, Super Saiyan. Is that Arthur screaming into the pig's ass as it chokes him out? <laughs> <laughs> as he's dying, that's all you can hear from him. I'm gonna puke. You're gonna make me puke, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my God. Or, or his uh his uh, signature scream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. But uh, for him to but for him to even think that that's the main reason why we don't like the game. It's one of the reasons, but it is not the main reason why we dislike the story. There's many reasons, it's... but no, people are not angry because Joel died. Like, we understand if you're going to kill the main character off. Okay, do it. But do it in a way where it makes sense and where it has emotional weight to it. Especially if people care about that fucking character. I, mm -hmm. Let me give another example of a main character dying in a meaningful way. Look at, he's a secondary main character, but look at Dom from Gears of War 3. Yes. Mm -hmm. Way. And dude, it made dude like last time I played that game years ago. The last time I played it, I played through that part. I'd seen that part so many times already, but still, I almost fucking cried. I want, I was about to fucking cry. I almost shed a tear. I'm like, <laughs> no. I mean, it's it's no! it's sad, but the way it was done is it's like it's respecting the character. You exactly. know what I mean? He's mm -hmm. making a noble. He's making a noble sacrifice, and at the end of the day, you root for him because he's giving his life for his fellow squad mates. So, but here, I didn't feel anything when Joel died. Like I felt like I, I saw an explanation for this by Neil Cuckman saying that he wanted you to feel the way Ellie felt in that moment. I don't mm. think he really accomplished that. Penis is a lie. 
Ellie was angry when she saw Joel died. I was also angry, but I wasn't angry because Joel died. I was angry because I was baffled at how stupid the story was getting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, there's a difference in terms of why you feel a certain emotional way. For me, it's just like, oh, we're just going to put this in for shock value and to shock the audience. Which, again, is something that The Last Jedi did constantly. Okay. Okay, uh, people, now going. you're going to have to worry about him yelling, not, not just me. <laughs> I had so many people, people in my chat. What was that? In this game. A lot of people Listen. are just mad at the fact that Joel dies. I had... See, he even put in a comical <laughs> sound effect. You, you know it's it stupid. He, he put a sound effect in there. Are Cold. you serious? Dude, you know it's stupid. You put it in a funny sound effect. You have to agree with us that this whole scene is fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, doing. Come on, man. Okay, anyway. <laughs> So Dude. many people in my uh, chat I thought that was legit angry that Joel game, doesn't get seen in this game. A lot of people scenes. are just... Yes, they're yeah, gonna... They're gonna add... Yeah. yeah they're, they're, I'm like, this okay, is a cartoon. They're, they're gonna add that in a masterpiece of a game in their eyes. Masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> they know it's a joke. Sure, if they... Uh, no, I'm game... pretty sure if... Even though they think the game's a masterpiece and, like, the rest of us don't, I'm pretty sure if they were to add that in, they'd be like, okay, yeah, everybody's right. This is officially stupid. Mm -hmm. If this game was a cartoon, this would be the sound. That would be the sound effect right there. Yeah. It's not a fucking cartoon, though. This is supposed to be. It's not. It's exactly. not. It's not a cartoon, Dad. Fact that Joel dies. I had so yeah. many people in my ah, chat who were angry that, that Joel doesn't get a redemption zone. arc, which isn't even really all that <laughs> true. Sherlock. Because... I think we've all. It just makes it... No, don't replay it. No, I can't hear it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, right, good, good job, look. Neil. I'm totally depressed at this scene now and because I'm laughing my ass off because of how <laughs> stupid it is. Good job. I mean, it was the Bravo. Bravo. I it, it, was, it. I can't deal it was, with it anymore. It was depressing and angry that I did it, but you know. Game. A lot of people are just mad at the fact that Joel Plug in my ears. I <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank God. <laughs> so many people in my chat who are angry that Joel doesn't get a redemption arc, which isn't even really all that true because he does admit his lie to Ellie and they... That's not a redemption. That's just not exactly a mission. Right. Oh, my God. It's not exactly a redemption. How, did, how is he I, redeeming I himself by admitting the truth and then immediately afterward Ellie is like, oh, we're done, and then she walks away? How is he redeemed exactly? Joel is left with nothing. Can yeah. I just, well, let me just point out a little something. If Joel were to, if Joel wanted to redeem himself, he should have just found some more Firefly doctors, gave them Ellie, and guess what? Just let, and guess what? Let the world be cured. Then he would have redeemed himself. Truly. That is, if he wasn't oh, killed man. first. Yeah, a redemption arc is like take for example the show Breaking Bad, <laughs> where you have. Walter White, who lost his family, lost all his money and everything, but at the end of it, he's redeemed because he goes after the people that hurt his family and took his money, and he takes them out to ensure that his family is going to be safe from now on. And he also takes other measures like that rich couple, some Gretchen and Elliot, Gretchen and Elliot, and Elliot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes to see them and threatens them and makes sure that his money goes to his children and stuff. So that's the way to redeem yourself without necessarily like being able to reverse your actions. Because once you cross I, a certain line, you can't cross back over it. But mm -hmm. to me, that that's more of a solid redemption arc. Like he even mm -hmm. admits that have, all of the all of the bad stuff that he committed was because he enjoyed it. He says, yep. "I enjoyed it. I liked it." Here, Joel's just like, "Yeah, so." I didn't tell you the truth. Here's the truth. And then she walks it, I, away. That's not a redemption yeah. arc. I, that's literally, I have another example. Just, that's literally just wrong. him being honest and her, just, and her just being pissed at him. Exactly. That's not I have another, I can, himself whatsoever. If, listen, go ahead. You, I find it very hard to believe that that's him redeeming himself. She walked away pissed. Which is perfectly reasonable, might I add. But if he wants to redeem himself, he's going to have to make up for it. Yeah. I, I have another example of another redemption arc that was so perfect, which is actually a show that I'm watching, by the way. It's Avatar The Last Airbender. It's Zuko's redemption arc. Yes! It is one of... 
if not the best parts about the show. It is such a perfect redemption arc. So well done. That's how you do a redemption arc right there. It is so perfect. Zuko, you know, for the first half, he's basically the bad guy. It's the character the actively trying to correct their mistakes, like their past mistakes. mistakes. Admitting yeah. admitting mm. that you said a lie isn't a redemption. It's just you that's telling someone correct. the truth. That's the only mistake the only mistake you're correcting is that you lied. That that's That's like, not that's redemption. Than... Yeah, that's that's like you know how that's... Joel would like have a redemption arc is if let's say after Ellie, you know, finds out the truth and Joel admits it to her and then she walks away. If Joel were to like let's say save Abby's life or even Joel would undergo like this uh, quest where he would go to find some other whether it be the Fireflies again or whomever find some company that would be able to mass distribute a vaccine he would go out and find them and then once he finds them say hey I, I found someone that's immune you know please let's go let's go find her I'll show her to you and then you can possibly de develop a vaccine and then by the end of the game this company finds Ellie and then he explains how she's immune and all this stuff and then Ellie's thankful because she realizes that Joel risks his life to go find whoever could distribute that vaccine you know what I mean that's a redemption arc where he's actively and, and trying to correct his mistakes just saying yeah I was yeah. wrong here's the truth that's not redemption. You, know, you aren't really doing it, anything. It no. All you're doing is doing. All, all you're doing is doing. All you're doing is being honest, which you should have been honest from the get go. You're just you're just saying been, something. You're not really doing anything. You know what I mean? It would have been a very emotional moment too had he, like, if he'd taken him over there and they would have probably killed her because like this was a good cutscene. This right here was a good cutscene. It was, but. Yeah. It wasn't redemption. It wasn't a redemption. He wasn't arc. redeemed. It wasn't really a redemption. No, it was not. Story, per se. We do talk <clears throat> about it a little bit. But people really, genuinely think that Joel was the hero of the first game. No, we don't. No, <sighs> no we do not, no, you idiot. Not no, we really. do not. Joel, Joel, the character himself, is in no way a hero in no, any instance. Who the hell said that? Who the hell said Joel was a hero? He was the real villain. Mm. No, Joel was, was not, not even a it, villain. He was like an anti-hero. He's more of a yeah. He's more of an anti-hero. He yeah, was I mean, he was like an anti-hero mixed with an anti mixed with an anti-villain. Like he didn't want to do everything he was doing. He was like more on the neutral side. But the reason but the reason he stopped them from developing the vaccine is because it would have killed Ellie. Is because they would have had to kill Ellie in order to produce it. And guess what? That means that was... he would have that means he would have lost the girl he viewed as a daughter. Mm hmm. It would have been. It would have. Gone, most why? Most, so you gone. view a guy in the first game you play as killing hundreds of people. You view him as a hero, in the most. He there's, killed people in the most. There's no heroes in this franchise. No. Like, no no one is saying that. Not. We know no Joel's not a hero. hero. We just like Joel because he's relatable. He has weight to him. He has gravity to him. He has aspects about him that we can relate to, that we root him for. We don't think I mean, he's a hero. Daughter. I mean, that's the thing. Lost Just because the character is earlier in the game does not mean he's the hero. Or she, I mean, you know, whichever one. Very, very early it does not mean the they're the hero. I mean, the guy lost his daughter very early in the game. Come on, that's pretty... Fairly early? He lost her, at the... he lost her right from the get-go. He lost her in the intro. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, but it just it proves our point. Three twenty years. It was, so it took a toll on you. I don't know. I I really like to see like screenshots or messages or something <laughs> from people that actually told you that they think that Joel is a hero. I actually mm -hmm. want to see some evidence of that because I do not believe that for a second. Literally, I mean, no like, one thinks Joel hero, is a hero. I kind of feel like they're just defining the word hero based on what it is in like the Fable franchise, which is like you're basically just a person with like extraordinary powers, and you're free to do whatever the hell you want. Like you could be evil, you could be good, but you're still considered a hero. Like I've heard people describe you're Joel as like being badass, anti-hero, noble, stuff like that, but no one is saying hero. Mm, that's just. Uh, that's a stretch. I mean, he could, he could, that could, uh, yeah. 
I mean, like, Joel had the, I mean, <laughs> Joel had some aspects of being a hero. Like he was completely badass. He, but for the most part, though, he was just trying to survive. He was just trying to do whatever it took to survive, even if it meant killing off innocents. <laughs> A guy with a few morals that will do whatever means necessary to stay alive. That's not necessarily a hero at That's all. That's not a hero I mean, at all. No. This is basic dead. human fucking instinct. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Joel, exactly. Joel trained himself to rely on his instincts. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. Now that that's Good. debunked. Next. There's People played that game small. and watched the ending and thought to themselves, Wow, Joel saved his daughter from those bad doctors. What a hero. Well, no one no! said that! His, no one really... Saved his daughter from people that were trying to save the world! And who, what if, what if, like, what if, like, yeah, they... No they one said vaccine, that because they... they know that him killing those doctors and preventing a vaccine is wrong. We know that. We're not stupid. Joel isn't a hero for doing that. He's doing it for his own self-interest. We realize that. But when it comes down to it, when it comes to, you know, we as human beings, when it comes to, like, making moral choices, when it comes between saving people as a whole or saving people that we care about, I hate to break it to you, but here's a, here's a bit of truth I'm going to throw your way. Human beings are fucking assholes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> we would rather save, we would rather want our family to be the only people left alive on Earth before letting anyone else get in the way first. Like, you know all those stories where it's like... Like, take Spider-Man PS4, for example. I don't know if you guys have seen right. the whole game or not, but spoilers uh, for that. Great game. Great but game. Love it. At the end of the game, he has a choice either to use what little he has of a vaccine injected into his aunt, or keep it around so that they can mass distribute it and then vaccinate Save. the entire city as a whole. And he, yeah. he chooses to go off the ladder. For me, it's like, in real life, uh, I don't know if you do that. I don't know. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's, it's a hard decision. And, and yeah. of course, if you ask anyone, of course they'd say, well, I'd probably say the greater good. Yeah, but you you never actually been in that situation, have you? Probably never will. So Pretty no no, one, no one's like, oh, Joel's a hero for killing those daughters and rescuing Ellie. No He's one so used... Doctors. That way to describe it at all, dude. Like again, okay, like show daughters. me, show me who said that. Because right now, I think you're just making this up. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah, I had people in my chat saying that his death was unfair because they brutally murdered, and I quote, a beloved character. Joel is Whoa. not a fucking beloved character. What? <laughs> I'm throw. I'm about to fucking. Mm. <laughs> I'm about, to, I'm about to kick some teeth. I'm about to kick some teeth. He wasn't a beloved character, guys. No, no one, no one liked the first game, guys. No one liked it. Everyone hates the first game. <laughs> I can't believe he really just said that. Everyone hates the first game. Why is there a second one? Yeah, yeah. If, if if people didn't like Joel at all, then why is there a second game? <laughs> well, what are you talking about? Do you even know what beloved pretty... means? Do you I mean, know what beloved dude, means? Every... Dude, dude, most if not everybody found Joel as a beloved character because he, because like you said, Josh, he's so again, relatable. He's relatable. He's yes. Relatable. It doesn't, again, it doesn't mean that we, we agree. We don't condone his actions. We like his character because of how relatable he is and how realistic he is. We don't agree with his choices. Yeah. We just think he as a character is, that's like, I, I really like the character Joker. Right? I don't condone mm -hmm. what he does, but I like his character. That means he's a beloved character. That doesn't mean mm -hmm. I like the stuff he does. That just means the character thing is cool. Same thing with, let's just, let's take uh, Darth Vader, right? Horrible, horrible guy goes around and, and has killed billions of people, right? I like his character. I don't like what he does, but I think as a character, he's cool because of all the weight and all the the past thing that has happened to him, you know, and all the emotional stuff he went through, it makes him an interesting character. And you when you make interesting kids? characters that are relatable, they're realistic, they go through struggle and try to overcome those struggles, those are good characters. And Joel is all of those things. So, let's give another 
example real quick. Arthur Morgan or John Marston from the Red Dead franchise. We don't condone with what with the stuff with the with their past choices in the gang life. But they're such great characters that they have such great redemption arcs and everything, and it's like you have to you have to love them. Exactly. Like, stories. Even the most heroic characters like Luke Skywalker are very beloved because of the shit they go through. Right. Mm -hmm. It's so it's it, Aang from Avatar: The Last Airbender. He went through a lot of shit just to beat the Fire Lord. Again, very relatable character. Mm -hmm. And again, Zuko, a beloved character, because absolutely. Again, I don't I don't agree with the stuff he did, but I liked him because he admitted he was wrong and tried to redeem himself. And he did go through a lot. <laughs> so Good like, father. Joel was never a beloved character. What? <laughs> Dude, what? Would, and and again, you rated the story from the first game a ten out of ten. You need to, you must know why people like his character. It's already. I feel like it was pretty self-explanatory when he said that, in a sense, because probably probably ninety. The reason why people love the game is ninety-five percent of the time was because of the main character Joel. It was a story. People like the story, the story and the characters. Can, yeah. So it that just. I don't understand. That's the main dude. reason why I like the first game is the story and characters. I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't think it's an amazing game because of the gameplay. Like I agree with you there, Marcus. I agree that the main reason why the first mm -hmm. game is to love is because of the story. But the fact that you know that and then say Joel isn't a beloved character, it's like, do you even know what beloved means? I feel <laughs> like he, I feel like he thinks that beloved means that you love the character because of the choices they make. But mm. no, that's no. not it at all. Nope. Anyway, let's let's backtrack just a little bit. The character. Joel is not a fucking Let's see if he explains why. Beloved character. Oh. Winnie the Pooh is a beloved character. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That's well, a I bad mean... comparison. Are that you is a terrible kidding comparison. Me? That's not even in the same not, category. Let's not even you know what? Let's the, the, you use fucking the, Winnie the Pooh as a beloved character? As a comparison? I mean, Winnie the Pooh I mean, sure. has never done anything bad in his entire life? <laughs> I mean, he's a cartoon character. Come on, that's not fair. Oh, he's, he's, he's not he, real. He's killing honey. It's Fuck. fucking bad. He's done some he, bad shit, you know? Come on. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is a gangsta. He's, he's savage. This is <laughs> savage Winnie the Pooh, man. Does this guy have any other... Any other examples? Give, give me a better <laughs> example. Come on, dude. Yeah, I don't Joel think he has a go. violent anti-hero. No, he doesn't. There are he did, you he just did, said it! Was... You just said it right there. Winnie the Pooh Hold is on. a beloved character. Joel is a violent anti-hero. Yes! That's what everyone... We all know this. Like... That's why he's beloved. And he has to be violent given the world that he lives in. It, it's oh the same scenario. It can't be. Oh it's god, same, yeah. It's the same scenario with like the Walking Dead show. It, they're, you know, they, every character that. You no one on that show, show is heroes. No yeah. one. On that show. No, no one. Because the, character... the rule is good people are the first to die. I mean, Rick Grimes, who is his beloved character, but he's done a lot of bad things in the shows and in the books. If you read the books, he's done and a lot look of bad things. Negan. Though. Negan. He turned into a savage, got reformed, then turned back into a savage. Exactly. And Negan. Gone back I mean, and forth. <laughs> and Negan, he's a... Negan's he's... a special case. So, I mean, <laughs> you, you think that Joel's not a beloved character and then killing him off two hours into the second game is fine? You don't. You, you really don't see an issue with that? Like, dude, come on. At least save that for near the end. That way there's some fucking, like, emotional drawback to it. I, right. I will bring up the point that I brought up in the, in the video we did of the leaks. You should have just killed him off like I... I mentioned this, the whole Logan, the Wolverine movie, how Logan mm. died in that. Nice. Per it would have been perfect. Yeah, hey, Logan, how you we doing? We aren't talking that about you. Hey, Logan, how you yeah. doing? That shows that, that... name. Shut up. I, 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 but I, I you still know what I'm... tickets to that. <laughs> you know, but, that's... <laughs> but that's how I think they should have killed him off. It's exactly how Wolverine died in the... It's just... He's fighting yeah. for his life, protecting Laura, his daughter, or Ellie in this case. Joel should have died somewhat similar to that. He goes out fighting, beating all the hell. He's like bleeding. he doesn't get to say anything to Ellie or her to him. They don't say anything to each other. They, he just dies. It's so anticlimactic. Yeah, that's how I would have 
if I had to write like a death for Jolt, that would have been what I would have. But, but but guys, it's happened. a realistic death yeah. because it's so unexpected. Unexpected doesn't mean good. I know this is a world where death is around every single corner, but if you're going to kill off a character in the caliber of Joel, you need to do it in a way that not only makes sense for his character, but it has to have some kind of emotional weight to it. When you kill someone off two hours into the game after playing as them for 20 plus hours from the previous title, and then act surprised when people are angry about this, come on Marcus. You're a smart guy. You 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 have to Come know why people Neil. are mad. Uh, I wouldn't say he's a smart guy. He ain't too. I mean, he he but I'm, he had a lot I'm of good sure. points in the beginning of this video. He does, yeah. But some of the things he's saying is like I don't know. I just that doesn't is the I things don't... he's saying now. Like Marcus, look. At first, at first we were agreeing with you, but now we get to this point. And it's like we are disagreeing with basically everything you're saying at this point or at least everything you're saying in this portion of your video you because ahead. they're not valid points they're real yeah they're not valid points at all just like he, he, he even admits that joel is an anti-hero like as a violent anti-hero literally everyone knows this no one thinks joel is a hero we and you know why you know why you know why joel is a beloved character because he's a violent anti-hero. <laughs> exactly. He, he's relatable. He's like, he's basically what everybody would need to be in the situations he's in. Okay, let's see if he explains and elaborates any further. There are scenes in the first game where he murders people just because he wants to. Or No, he does no. not. No. Oh, no. Yeah, you know. Not really. I mean, this or, example or right survive. here, he's murdering this guy because he's trying to get to Ellie, and he knows that if he doesn't kill him, he's not going to have any other options he's not, to get to her. He's not, kill, he's not killing him because he wants to. He's killing him because he has to. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think Joel has ever necessarily killed anyone because he wanted to in the first game. I mean, that's the thing. Joel's not... I that's mean, a, that's a hell Joel's of a stretch. Kind of, listen, I don't know whether or not if Joel actually likes violence, but, but if he does, he's not the kind of person that just goes around looking for fights. Goes around trying to kill people. Right, he's a he survivor. He tries to he avoid fighting he doesn't it. Want to kill, he doesn't want to kill people. Yeah. He has to. It's like a Mad Max thing. You know, like Mad Max from both the game and the movies. He didn't want to kill people. He had to. Mm -hmm. You can't trust anyone in a world like this. You just, but you know, you just, in this type of world, similar to The Walking Dead, you cannot trust anyone. You could be sitting in this room with this nice guy. He may be nice to you, but then. You know, Stab like, your scene, back you know, ten minutes later. Yeah, behind the scenes, he's not exactly the nicest human being. Hit you over yeah. the head with a club. Yeah, Gosh, you with a golf Sorry. club. In a, world, yep. in, a world, <laughs> in a world like the post, in the post, post pop, the, I can't even speak. Post apocalyptic. Yeah. That's a hard word to say. Post apocalyptic. Post apocalyptic. Post apocalyptic. There we go. Yeah. But. Pip and paddle. Okay, no. <laughs> Pickle paddle, pick a paddle, pit of poppers. <laughs> I can't say that. Anyway, but it, it just, in this type of world, it's just, you can't really trust him. You don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know who you're sitting beside. Like, if you're on a dinner table, you don't know who it is. You trust him. So, whomever, you know, like this guy, he could have been, your, he could have been his best friend and like, oh, I trust you with my life. But deep down, he's not who he thinks he, who he thinks he could be a totally in this a yeah in this in, in this ocean. new in this new war in this new post-apocalyptic world the guys you're friends with for a while you could really see a whole different new side of him side could, of that person and he could like heard. literally kill you within any second so it, it makes sense why everyone in this world has to be an anti anti-hero anti-villain or whatever but I'm still I'm still failing to understand why he thinks some or he said that fans said that he was a bull or he was a beloved hero. I just it doesn't that doesn't make sense to me at all. Yeah, like I, why he said like why he said he would argue that. Let's see what else he's got. <laughs> since all of that's been debunked now. Next. I think a lot of people wrongfully believe that this is a story about how you have to protect your loved ones no matter the cost. Well, that I mean, is what it's about though. That is from I, the first yeah, game. 
that's, that's literally what the first game's about. about. That's pretty. It's pretty solid. Uh, that's like that's like the Walking Dead. I mean, at, at least, I mean, at least that's the story about... from the first game. They could have taken the story in a different direction in the second game, but the first game that's basically the theme of it. Mm -hmm. just, why? Why I do you think? think what, what was the whole point of the ending sequence where Joel saves Ellie from getting dissected? Is because he's trying to, knowing that he's gonna stop the world from getting a vaccine. Is I'm gonna save my loved ones no matter what. That's literally what happens. It's sort. It's the same scenario with Lee Everett and Clementine from the Telltale Walking Dead games. He's mm -hmm. doing everything in his power to protect that little girl, right. no matter yes. what, even if it costed him. His life. You could say that's the theme of most apocalyptic movies, games, period. Is exactly. save your loved yeah, ones no matter the cost. Exactly. And then on top and then on top of that, alone. there are and then on top of that, there are situations yeah. in real life where people are actually put in that situation. Not in a post apocalyptic way, but it's like Real life, we got some bad people out there and it's either, and if they're threatening your loved ones and you're around, it's either it's either it's either you and your loved ones or them. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, either, it's either kill, it's either kill or be or be killed. killed. Yep, exactly. Joel saves Ellie because he desperately does not want to lose another daughter. Correct. There's no point where he grapples with friend. the morality of his choice. He wants to save Ellie. He does not care about curing humanity. Correct. This is a sad ending, and not because humanity is doomed, but because we spend the whole game watching these two learn to care for each other, and bantering, and joking, and sharing personal heartwarming experiences with each other. And now that's ruined forever. Ellie knows in her heart that Joel is not telling the whole truth and that he lied to her face even though she told him not to. And because of that, she can never really forgive him again. There's virtually nothing heroic in this story at all, and yet people still see Joel as a hero. Dude. No. Who is no. saying that? Marcus, is he is he reading reviews from like ten year olds or something? <laughs> I don't know. Was there, was there a ten year old? That, was there actually a ten year old? Because it would make it, to oh, me. It would make to me. Many, listen, Marcus. I'm sorry, Anthony. Marcus, how many of these people? How many of these people that you're reading the reviews from are fans of Mr. Boss for the win? Like legit fans. Oh dear lord, I hate that guy. Uh, we don't. We don't, <laughs> we, don't need to bring that up. we don't need to bring that up. We don't need to bring that up. All right, moving on. I don't guarantee you, most of the more. I swear he's reading his reviews for my kids or some. Cause I could kind of see like, like let's say like I was like seven or eight years old and I played this game and I played as Joel. I was like, wow, Joel's an awesome hero. He like saved her and stuff. But like when you're you're more grown up and you understand like how death works. It would not make sense for you to think, oh, this guy's a like, hero. I mean, unless you're, like, not paying attention or anything, you're just, like, playing the game, not really caring, I guess people would think that because, ooh, this guy risked a little girl from getting killed. But, what a hero. But if you're paying attention, it's like, no one is thinking that. Yeah. It's like, how could you realistically think that? Especially exactly. And, mm -hmm. and he keeps saying that uh, people have been saying in his chat... I really want to see this chat now and see what exactly people were saying. You know, you know what I think he I should have done. Comments. Here's what he should have done: is uh, whenever he says people in my chat have been saying this, this, and this throughout the video, he should have taken screenshots of those and put them on the screen so we can see exactly what those people were saying. He should have done yeah. that because honestly, and I guess what it turns out they're not saying that at all. Yeah, because honestly, I can't un unless again it's like a little kid or someone not paying attention said, or whatever, yeah. or someone or someone that was way like over emotional, like oh my god, oh my god, like, you know that could happen sometimes. You know, people just going crazy and losing their minds. That's yeah, I, mean, that's, I looked up true. on Google the fucking protagonist for Last of Us because if you look up Last of Us protagonist, it says Joel Miller. I mean, technically he is, but he is. But that 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 means he he's the hero. But he's he doesn't have hero traits to him. No one exactly. calls him a hero. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I mean that's the thing. Where, you probably just looked it up and said, he, "Man, he, go, let's put that in." Yeah. I mean, here's the thing: just because you're the protagonist of something doesn't it, maybe you are the hero of the whole thing, but you're not a. He, but that doesn't mean you're the hero in the sense of like what a hero. You're, actually you're is. not the you're not the like, savior of the universe. You're exactly. a hero in the concept of like you're the main character. Yeah, that's You're like saying uh, that's like saying Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Two is the protagonist. I mean, he is. He does a lot but of he's not a hero. shit, but he's not a hero. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So again, I don't buy that for a second. People are saying Joel's a hero. Let's see what else. Yeah, I don't buy. If it. Ellie had it her way, she would have died because we don't know that. 
We don't. We, don't know we still that. don't know that. We, we actually never. I, we she didn't we even, I mean, here's the, no, I mean, here's the thing. She didn't even know what, what she would have to go through would kill her. Exactly. And if she would have known beforehand, she could have probably might have changed her mind, but she didn't I know. I wonder. I am curious, though, is like, you know what would have been nice is if the Fireflies asked Ellie first, get her permission, instead of just killing her without her knowing it, like without her consent or anything. But then again, these are the Fireflies. They're, as we know, pretty corrupt individuals, as we know. Because, like, the first game kind of set it up to where everything is, like, in a gray area. The Fireflies are trying to fight for a noble cause, but at the same time, they're also kind of shady. For me, it's like, here's the thing. I, I watched a uh, video from uh, Jeremy Johns. He brought up a really good point about this. And he brought up, let's just say, let's just hypothetically say... That Joel said, okay, you know what, Ellie, yeah, you can go ahead and, and do what you can to get the cure from her, create a vaccine. Go ahead. Okay, let's say, let's just say that that happened. What then? Do you honestly think that the Fireflies would have, even, even if the Fireflies had the means or resources to distribute a vaccine, do you honestly think they would just give that vaccine out to everyone? No. They probably they'd probably just be they'd probably just be distributing it just distributing it amongst themselves. And again, I'm gonna quote Jeremy Johns here, but he said that when it comes to human beings, whenever we invent something new, the first thing we do, the first thing we do whenever we create something is we find a way to weaponize it. Every time. So I could imagine that the fireflies would probably use this cure on themselves and and then see themselves as like these overlords above people that don't have the vaccine or only mm -hmm. or, or, or only privileged thing, people not, get vaccinated or, or whatever. Here's the thing, if not if not weaponized that they'd find some way to profit off of it. Right. Yeah. Actually, yeah. They came off as they came off as like the equivalent as like a post apocalyptic equivalent of good people fighting for a noble cause, but they're not like the Minutemen from Fallout 4 where they actually do mean well. True. But again, like it, it is more of a theory, but I think that, you know, what Jeremy Johns described and what I just reiterated, I think that would fit in a world like The Last of Us. So, mm -hmm. you can't necessarily say that Joel letting Ellie die and having her body create a vaccine would have really fixed everything. You know, it's it's hard to say, but... I never even thought about it. I never even thought about it like that until now, Josh, to be honest. As at this point, she is oh, not a selfish person. From her perspective, Joel took the choice away from her. And now, this story explores how Ellie takes on Joel's traits. The game opens with her learning how to play guitar like he does. And then we also see her become more comfortable with killing like he was. We see her exacting her revenge in the same way as him, except it takes a toll on her. I personally love this shit, and I love how Joel's death has consequences for every character. It's handled wonderfully. No, it is no, not handled it is wonderfully. Not. See, like, everything you said about Ellie picking up, like, she feels remorse for her actions, and she's becoming more gritty and aggressive. I, I agree. I like that stuff. She's evolving as a character. But, and I agree that Joel's death should have consequences. It was not handled wonderfully, though, dude. I don't like the whole, plus, I just don't like the whole revenge plot either. It's very cliche. It's very overplayed. You know, we, we know, we know, like, the whole theme of the game is revenge is bad. Like, we've explored this dozens of times, and this is coming from a story from the caliber of The Last of Us, where it, ha it was such a unique and compelling mm -hmm. story, where this one is so generic compared to that one. Yeah. So, a couple good points there, mm -hmm. but that last bit you kind of lost me, saying that and his death was handled forget, wonderfully. Does she follow through on the revenge anyways? Yeah, she which, doesn't... We'll that. We'll which makes that. the whole revenge story pointless. But people are mad. They're mad because you don't kill Abby and get revenge in the end, and I cannot understand that at all. Okay, let's see okay, you why you think why it's... Why we're mad? Let, let's see, let's let him explain. At the end of the game, our two protagonists have this crazy final battle, and as Ellie is drowning Abby, she flashes to an image of Joel. And at first I thought this was just some cliche way to remind us that, oh no, Joel wouldn't want Ellie to do this. 
But later, we see that she was actually flashing back to a very specific scene where Joel and her are talking about forgiveness. And I would say that that's the theme of the game. Ellie has to learn how to forgive Joel for what he did, and then she has to learn how to forgive Abby. So no, this no, is No, she not does not! No. Uh, no, 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 no. You missed the mark there again. Funny way of showing it, if that was the plan. That's a Wonderful. funny way of I would have People just are mad. Doing it. They're mad Sorry, because you don't kill Abby and get revenge in the end. And I cannot understand that at all. At the end of the game, our two protagonists have this crazy final battle, and as Ellie is drowning Abby, she flashes to an image of Joel. And at first I thought I like this was just some cliche Abby way to remind us that, oh no, Joel wouldn't want Ellie to do this. But later, we see that she was actually flashing back to a very specific scene where Joel and her are talking about forgiveness. And I would say that that's the theme of the game. Ellie has to learn how to forgive Joel for what he did, and then she has to learn how to forgive Abby. So no. <laughs> no, dude. I, li I like how he brought up that Abby, he said the both protagonists, so he's like, oh yeah, Abby's a protagonist. <laughs> that like for a protagonist abby's the daughter really like... she's the farthest thing from that dude yeah I, I i didn't know if you guys noticed that but i heard him say both i mean things. Nah, look I don't think here's so. look, abby's look, not look. here's look here's the thing here, here is the thing okay abby does not deserve forgiveness no she does no. not i mean she killed joel she killed joel right in front of Ellie, and I mean, and she Joel was like a father to Ellie, them. and I mean, I'm sorry, if if it were me drowning Abby, I would have just kept drowning her until until all the life just left her. I would have just kept, even if it did bring tears to my eyes, I would have just, I would have just followed my instincts and just gotten my revenge. Re we gotta be realistic here. Realistically, Joel would have done the same thing. I'm going to bring up another point from Jeremy Johns' video where he says that the story would have had a lot more weight and it would have made more sense if in the world and the context of the story as well. How interesting would it have been because this this currently how this how the story plays out is that she lets Abby go and then she decides to go back to the farm where Dina and the kid were only to find that they both left and they took all their stuff so Ellie is left with nothing. I think it would have been much more interesting if Ellie went through with her revenge, but play out the same scenario, where she goes back, she sees Dina and the kid have left with all their stuff, and she realizes that killing Abby was pretty much pointless. Instead of, she she lets Abby go for virtually no reason. That flashback yeah. you're referring to with her talking about forgiveness that should have been like at the end of the game where Ellie goes, was it worth it? And then it's kind of left up to the audience to determine if it was worth it or not. Having just letting her go makes absolutely no sense I, considering she murdered like 5,000 people up to this point. She did, she, yeah, it wasn't even Joel that she murdered. She murdered a couple other characters throughout the game. As Tommy. As you even Joel that she just murdered. I think you mean it wasn't even just... No, she she didn't kill Tommy. She hurt him, but she also yeah, Tom, killed Tommy she really. killed Ellie's friend Jesse. And for me, yeah, it's like you him. have every reason to kill Abby at this point. There's she no point killed, in letting her Dina go. Too. There's no point. She almost killed Dina. I mean, she almost again, killed Dina. Uh, yeah. I mean, guys, but the, again, the girl I'm that she was with. If you all were put in Ellie's situation, like me, you mother. probably would have just drowned her. And you know what? You know what else too is. Uh, this is another point brought up in Jeremy Johns's video, is during this whole uh, sequence where you're at the farm with Dina and the kid. At no point is there ever any type of understanding from Ellie, where she's looking at the child, she's holding the baby in her arms. At no point does she go, "Oh, this is why Joel saved me. I understand now because he saw me." as this kid that he wanted to protect and then she forgave him right that doesn't happen that would have worked it would have worked would have been a nice little bittersweet ending right for, that for i kid. think that should have been the ending where uh ellie is holding this child in her arms and then she's getting flashbacks of joel and her together and then she goes i understand now i forgive you but, or or hey 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 or maybe even this could tie into it. You know, like, I actually remember playing as Ellie in the first game. <laughs> I read a note that was from her mom that 
her mom wrote when Ellie was just a, when Ellie was just a newborn. Fucking, it actually, it's kind of like her mom made it clear that she hated babies, but holding Ellie as a newborn brought her joy. Mm -hmm. right. It brought her such joy. Ellie, you know Ellie, going around up to this point, murdering like what hundreds, thousands of people to get to Abby, and then at the end she's like, "No, nah, I'm just gonna let him. I'm just gonna let her go." I mean, at that, I mean, at that she point, you that might, I mean, at that her. point, you might as well just follow through because it's like, if what you did was irredeemable, because you did everything you did was pointless. Then already, all those people you killed was pointless. Her whole story, of revenge, was just pointless bullshit. It it was to be just, fair, both was just these thrown in there and then to... thrown, it was just thrown in there and as and maybe cliche but it's like if you even if it is cliche if you're gonna do something about it unless you can find a way to make it uncliche you might as well just follow through mm -hmm. yeah. no this is not a story about revenge what yes it is yes it is hold on yes it is <clears throat> Abby so no likely. this is not a story about revenge it I uh, what? There, Josh. I'm what? Is there a little something about Abby killing right. Joel that we should know about? I mean, yeah, that I was gonna point that out. Like, you know, both Ellie and Abby both have this idea of getting revenge. Abby wants revenge for Joel for killing her dad, for killing her dad, and Ellie wants revenge for from Abby for killing Joel. It, it's and he. But it's not a revenge story. Revenge. Yeah, that's that's. No, I mean that. I mean that. That sums up a revenge story from A that's to pretty much, Z. That's pretty revenge. That's like revenge, revenge textbook revenge one on one. I mean, look, look. Whenever you're talk, look. Whenever you're talking about making a story that is that that I'm sorry is based on revenge, and I know he's saying it's not, but I'm gonna quote Bill from the last from the last of us part one here. Whenever you're putting stuff like that in the in the process, that's plan A, B, C, all the way to fucking Z. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm Yep, that is true. Hell, get in here! Say it! <laughs> it is a story about Gosh, forgiveness, which is much more... No, it is... Did he just say it's a story about forgiveness? He did no, not that, just say that. It, has point it is a story the, about forgiveness, which is... Based stuff, but yeah, it's he did. Oh whatever! This guy's full of shit. Marcus, I'm sorry, Marcus. <laughs> it's not I'm about sorry. forgiveness. No, so Marcus, I'm sorry, but you're you're really full of it when you say you that. Can only forgive one of. I feel things. like Joel, you know, not I his killer. Like, I, like literally, it. I feel like he literally just. I feel like at this point he he might as well just be saying this stuff just to clickbait people. <laughs> he could be. To me, if you got okay. to this scene and you thought I that the you. best narrative choice is for Ellie to kill Abby, then I truly cannot fathom how you consume stories. You f. He's about, he's about to, to be taken. He's about to let some demons out he doesn't want to. I can't see fathom your how you yeah. understand stories. Like, did you play? Yeah, yeah, did you see? That. Did you play the same game we played? Did, did I feel like he's talking about a different did game. Even, did you? Did, did you like even play the game at all? I haven't seen any videos for it, but I'm from all we've seen so far. Did you even play the first game? Story. Did you play the first game? Did you did yeah, you play did you it? Play the first game? Yeah, did you? I know you're playing this. He played the second game because we saw his little gameplay footage. You've been playing it. If he even really played it. Let me let me tell you guys something real quickly. Let me tell you guys something real quickly. My uh. So I have this friend named Steven who recently just started playing The Last of Us, and because uh, I still have a uh, physical copy of it, so I let him borrow it, and he's actually before he even finished it, um, he caught me watching. A YouTube clip of someone was like ranting about Joel's death. He saw Joel getting killed, and he was like, "Wait, what the fuck? Is that the sequel?" And I go, "Yep." He's like, "I don't want to finish the first game now." <laughs> and then, and then the second, <laughs> the second question he asked me was, "Does Ellie at least get revenge on that golf club bitch?" And I go, "Nope." Uh, he's been taking too many steroids. Just let her go. He's like, "Why?" And I'm like. Because she forgave him. It's like, why? Like, just because she forgave him. This I, I, thing. I, I don't know. Why Why did she forgive Abby? Is why? Why? What is for? Is it because of Joel? Is it because is it death because is bad? Of... Why? <laughs> this is the last of us. I mean, death <laughs> is bad, but... I okay, mean... we saw a little girl die. Oh, like the in the intro, in the first game. Hey. 
Yeah, that's not PC anymore. I mean, it's an everyday <laughs> thing in real life, but even more so in the last one. No, they they just want to keep Abby alive for the sequel, so they can keep milking this franchise. I, I, mm. I, I watched I watched a video. There was a guy that was talking about the Eric doing an ending explained, and he brought up that he thinks it's likely that we were going to probably play as Abby in the next game with uh, the character that one other character. What's her name? Lev. I, I it's his other character that something Abby's like with. that. Yeah. Um. Um. There's likely the possibility they may play as her, and you're basically it's basically the same thing with Joel and Ellie. He plays one character, and you're following with the other character. It's basically the same thing as the first game. And then I guess Ellie is like, I guess she appears. I can't remember what he said specifically. I think it's like every now and again she shows up. I I don't remember what they say, but that's that's his guess of what the sequel would have been if they do a last for three. Which they they, they yeah. better not do a third one. Yes. They. The dude, absolute, dude, dude, given the fact, dude, that's, given the fact that there are people was. left, I don't think they can. That was like, guess. so the fact that he says anything. that he can't fathom how people can even consume storytelling, you do realize that most people love the first game, right? Like, where that where is the outrage for the first game? Where again? Game. Let's go back to where is the outrage for Red Dead Two when Arthur Morgan died? Where was the outrage, Marcus? Where was the outrage when Lee from the Walking Dead games died? What was the outrage? There wasn't, because the, their deaths were handled well. They were executed. No, the only outrage the there would have been from their deaths is the fact that they died, and you didn't want them to die, but it was handled so well that it's like, you right. can deal with Because the writers carefully wrote their deaths to be in an emotional way to where you're sad they died but the way they go out is respectful to them this was not respectful to joel in fact it there's there's even a fucking part in that cutscene where joel dies where a character that looks just like neil cuckman walks up to his corpse and spits on him that's respectful you're gonna tell me that's respectful that was a wonderful way that they handled his death that was wonderful to you Come on, dude. No, he will say that because he doesn't like the guy. <laughs> I feel like Marcus Joel's just didn't like Joel. <laughs> oh, I think I feel like he hate... <laughs> Extra, extra, YouTuber goes mad. Because to me, this was never <laughs> a revenge story. I never saw it We're that all way. Mad. Ellie and Abby both suffer immensely for the things they've done wrong. Abby takes revenge on Joel, and it causes all of her friends to die. Then she's tortured and enslaved for months, and literally crucified. When Ellie starts trying to get revenge, Good. it ends with her having absolutely cool nothing. She's left with no one. And that makes for a satisfying ending? Like, Ellie literally has nothing and no one left. She can't even fucking play the guitar, and, that, and the game ends there? Like how is that how is that a good story? The game ends on a such a depressing note mm. that it's like it doesn't even make you look forward to what's to come next. It doesn't. No. There's nothing to look forward to anymore. It's all dead, gone, or broken. That's not a compelling story to me. It's just no. not. And I really like how both of these stories mirror Joel's adventure in the last game. For instance, Joel makes a selfish choice in the first game, and it damages his relationship with Ellie forever. At the end of this game, Ellie makes a selfish choice by leaving Dina to try and go get revenge, but it damages her relationship with her forever. This is the level of storytelling that I want from this series. I love shit like this. I love having strong themes that permeate throughout the whole story. I remember when the first game came out, and people were furious that you had to kill the doctors and make Joel do the bad thing. Uh, I love how he grabbed a scalpel it? to defend himself. Yeah. <laughs> Take I mean, this, my butter fucking... knife, bitch. <laughs> I mean, at that point, Joel has a fucking assault rifle on his back. Was yeah, anyone yeah, man, really upset up that you had to kill? <laughs> that you had to, that the game made you kill like the doctors and stuff? No, he had a fucking <laughs> knife on me. Fuck, Fuck that bitch. <laughs> Not, not really. Shoot, realistically, someone pulled up a knife on me, I would shoot them. Because I'm that's considered a threat to me. If they threaten my life, I'll take their defense. Yeah, I, I, like basically. I said, it's like I said earlier it's like I said earlier, it's either kill or be if you're killed. willing to give away your life, you tend to threaten someone else's. And going and, back to what he said about the both games having similar themes, 
absolutely false. Yes. False, false, false. What you were saying where um, Joel makes the, self- makes the selfish decision to rescue Ellie from being dissected, <laughs> and in this game, Ellie makes a selfish decision to leave Dina behind. They're totally different scenarios, though. They are. Mm-hmm. Yes, like, they they're are. Doing, they're doing selfish things, but it's apples and oranges. One is literally the fate of the entire world. One is, oh no, my poor relationship. Like, like one is vastly more interesting than the other. It's both entirely different things that have no relation to each other whatsoever, other than the fact that they're both selfish decisions. That's literally the only relation that the two decisions that those two decisions have is that they're both selfish. But other than that, it's just completely different. They're scenarios. different apples and oranges. Again, exactly. I agree that I love no, stories. No, it's more than apples and oranges. It's apples and fucking bananas. Pretty much. <laughs> I agree that I like stories where choices have consequences, you know, and things don't play out the way you want them to all the time. But again, the game ends on such a unsatisfying note where it makes you feel like nothing was fucking accomplished. You know what I mean? At least in the first game, Joel and Joel got to save Ellie and she was still alive. Like you feel like you accomplished something. Here, Ellie has nothing. Nothing. That's not satisfying, dude. And but that's the, the fact shit that, that I love. To make it I actually I'm really happy. like that these games don't give us a lot of choice. It is a little heavy-handed in some scenes, but this series is not about us, the player. It's about the characters. If Ellie gets attacked by a dog and almost dies, she will kill the dog to survive. You don't get to spare the dog because Ellie wouldn't spare the dog. Zero out of ten. <laughs> I hate killing yep. dogs. Oh, in brutality, Tina. Tina! 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 No! <laughs> you know how sad it would be is if, uh, is if one of the owners of the dog that you just killed was like, Oh no, that was my poor dog, Tina. Don't worry though, it's a pit bull. Pit bulls are dangerous. Oh man. We as an audience have become far too comfortable with the idea that said. our choices are the one <laughs> thing that matter in video games. What? Yeah, what? Well, I wasn't paying attention. What? what? I'm far too comfortable attention. with the idea she will kill the dog to survive. You don't get to spare the dog because Ellie wouldn't spare the dog. We as an audience have become far too comfortable with the idea that our choices are the one thing that matter in video games. What? What? Uh, no, well, that's not it. That's only in Telltale games. Right. <laughs> yeah. Telltale games, that's in Fallout, that's in, that's in that's Elder in... Scrolls. That's in every, like, in, RPG that you can actually Yeah, RPG game. In. It's also in yeah, RPG. I feel like this dude play like, an entirely different game or something. I'm just... <laughs> like, Some games really right. benefit from taking choice away from the player to contextualize the character's role in that world. If you were allowed to do a pacifism run of this game, then this scene would be absolutely ridiculous. This is similar to a problem that I have with Metal Gear Solid V. In that game, you are playing as a bad person. However, you can go the whole game without killing anybody, but at the same time, the game is still going to treat you like a bad person. So there's kind of a disconnect. I'm not doing bad things in the gameplay, but the story doesn't really care, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. People are upset that you are forced to do mean yeah, things true. as Ellie, but this is not a nice story, and Ellie's not a nice person. And I have a lot of friends who can't finish the game because it makes them miserable, and I think that's fine. This one is not for everybody. But being mad and furious because a game makes you do evil things is really stupid. No one- what? No one Nobody's is complaining about, about it except you fucking little- I love how you- Josh, like I love how you stop the video. It. The guy's looking at oh, oh god. Poor guy. The guy's, like looking at, the guy's like looking at the screen, and he's like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Please but kill I, me! I, it, it, it's, it's the fact- he says it like, you know, oh, if you- oh, he, We're not oh, upset god, that you do it. evil things. Yeah, exactly. Like, dude, I love Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead, and I go around killing random people. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not that. I don't I don't know where he got that idea from. That like, I'm a grown man. I don't I don't get scared or feel sad when I do evil things in a fucking video game. Like, that's not what we're saying. It's a video all. game. It's, it's a, a video, video game. game. 
And like honestly, if you if you like get miserable or depressed for doing evil things in a video game, then you should you be should playing, be playing, playing first games. Yeah. Or mature yeah. games. Like have like have you ever played a I Call of Duty game? game? Like you don't go around shooting people constantly in those games. Do you feel bad about it? No, because it's a video game. <laughs> and some of them are shooting at you. <laughs> right. Do you feel bad for playing All of them are shooting game? at you. No. So well, no, no, we're not like... people aren't finishing the game because it it makes us feel miserable and depressed. People aren't finishing the game because the story is just fucking Shit. stupid. <laughs> Plain and simple. The biggest meme about this game right now is, don't you feel <laughs> bad? And I think this is kind of silly. If you didn't feel don't bad, feel bad then you. maybe the post-apocalyptic drama narrative isn't doing its job. But this sentiment is also really silly to me because the first game was just as miserable and it also made you do bad shit against your will. It had a lot of moments where Joel was forced to murder. If you think this game is bad because Joel died, then I really want to know how you feel about other stories like this. No. Oh, okay, he's going to bring uh, up some examples. You don't feel bad because Joel died. I'd really... You know, already brought, we already brought this up. Let, let's see, let's see what he compares Joel's death to exactly. Already, I'm really curious. How you feel about other stories up. like this? No Country for Old Men must be a very hard movie for you to watch. Uh uh, no, you did not just go. Uh uh. I, I I've never watched it, so I wouldn't know. Dude, that is an excellent, excellent film. You guys need to watch it. But I'll just say this: the way characters die in that movie makes so much more sense okay and it's handled far more well that was a bad example and i'm not trying to compare the two i'm not saying oh this story... no other example you just said you were comparing the two yeah. what why Hold is on. he why is he or why is he contradicting Hold himself on. so much if you think this game is bad because joel died then i really want to know how you feel about other stories like this how how I want to know how you feel about all the stories like this, and then he says, "No country for old men must be a very hard movie for you to watch." And I'm not trying to compare the two. I'm not. You just you just brought up you example just did. in your video and basically said, "Yeah, no you're making a comparison." Movie. What are you talking about? Um... I mean, he he says he's not trying to, but it's like. But you are. But he you're is, yeah. If you don't want to do a comparison thing, that, you know, you know the thing up. is, you know the thing is, he he's having a, a hard time uh, doing an argument where he's comparing this game to other stories because other stories have done it so much better that he's having a hard time explaining this. <laughs> so yeah. he's contradicting himself. All right, let's. Uh, I guess I don't know. See what else he says Old here. Man must be a very hard movie for you to watch. And I'm not trying to compare the two. I'm not saying this story is flawless. It has huge problems. There are a ton of things that are actually really stupid in this story, and I don't see anybody talking about any of them. For one, okay. the pacing in this story is fucking awful. Immediately after That's what I've been dies, saying. we ruin all tension by making Ellie and Dina turn on generators and lackadaisically ride their horse around the city looking for treasure. This game does not make a good first impression, and like I said, the opening scenes in this game were not fun to play for me. At this point, I was ready to give the game a 5 out of 10. I really was not having fun. But then things start to pick up a little bit, and I ended up liking it a little more. As Ellie's story kept moving, I was enjoying it more bit by bit. We even have this really cute flashback scene with Joel, which breaks up the scenes of hectic violence. But Funny how uh, the only compliments I can really see him giving are the flashback scenes of Joel and Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Then this wasn't the only flashback, and with each subsequent flashback, I felt like the story wasn't properly balanced. There's one flashback, which I feel could have really fit better as the intro tutorial of the game. And then there are lots of flashbacks that don't serve any purpose at all. And then things get even worse when we stop playing as Ellie. About halfway through the game, we play as Abby, and we see what she's been doing while Ellie was going on her lesbian murder hobo rampage. Well, clearly she's been taking see, my, my complaint is not only is uh, playing as Abby like a middle finger to the player, but playing as Abby, her story is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't coincide with Ellie's story at all. Like, it's Which literally it a waste. Like, you know, the majority of the time you're playing as Abby is you're literally trying to get medicine. Like, that's not <laughs> compelling. That's a major complaint. I, so, people are so no, Marcus. People are not just complaining about Joel's death or having to play as Abby. There's many, many things 
people are complaining about. Joel's death is, of course, the biggest one because that's such a big fucking decision. And when things first shifted over, I was actually kind of hyped for this. Also, I was excited to see the things that I've steroids. done, but in a new context. But that's not what Abby's story is. Abby's story follows a completely different plot that is 100% disconnected from what we experienced as Ellie. Yep. A big chunk of the Abby plot is based on finding medicine for this one girl. <laughs> and then after hours just of that. looking for the fucking medicine, you give it to her. And then she just gets shot by the main villain. Yep. And then the main villain of Abby's plot immediately gets shot by the girl that he shot. And then you realize that it just didn't fucking matter anyway. Right. People like to say, oh, well, since Ellie didn't kill Abby, I feel like I wasted my time. No, dude, this is what it feels like to waste the player's time. It'd be one. I mean, we did waste our time, though, by, like, playing as Ellie and killing all those people to find Abby. It was a waste of time because nothing came from it. We wasted she our murdered, time and our money. She murdered all those people for no reason because she didn't kill Abby in the end. Like, what about that is so hard for you to understand? I don't get it. ...connected to the one that we had been playing for hours, but it's not. I have no idea why these two stories aren't connected in a more cohesive way. I for agree. For Abby's whole story, she doesn't even know anything about Ellie. And for right. Ellie's whole story, she doesn't know anything about the crazy jungle cult. This game is divided in half, and the two halves have almost nothing to do with one another. I almost think they should have just cut Abby's uh, story out from this game completely, and nothing would change, honestly. Nothing would have changed. Mm. This game could have been 10 hours shorter than it is, and you would have played out the exact same. The only reason that they made you play as Abby is to feel some type of sympathy for her, but it doesn't work because she kills a, and I'm going to say it, Marcus, hard to trigger you, she kills a beloved character so early on in the game. How that... fucking dare you call him beloved? You're <laughs> I'm, such sorry. A I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. Gosh. How no, dare you? I'm sorry, sorry, okay? You don't have to get hostile like everybody else does in this. But it's like, because they make you play as someone that killed one of your favorite characters so early on, right away from the get go, you already dislike Abby, like right away. So they like they go so far as to like have a scene play out where Abby and her friends rescue this zebra that's trapped. Like, oh, Abby's an animal lover. Ooh, I don't give a flying fuck. She killed one of my favorite characters. <laughs> exactly. I don't care. Like they they try so <laughs> Man, hard. Man, fuck that zebra for all I care, and fuck Abby. Why the they they try so hard to make you like Abby. It just doesn't work. It's been fixed by ditching this time hopping shit. Stop doing flashbacks within flashbacks. It's messy and never works out. If this game was laid out chronologically, I think it would have been really cool. I and agree. Playing through a part and Joel would have probably lived longer and people wouldn't be as pissed off. Where you're Abby and she's hanging out with her friends and talking to them and interacting with them. And then immediately you switch over to Ellie and you're forced to kill the people we just met and were acquainted with. You play as Abby and you hang out. Which, by the way, awesome. whenever you kill one of Abby's friends, or even when one of Ellie's friends dies, like take, for example, Jesse, he is. I don't think he's ever mentioned ever again after he dies for the rest of the game. Nope. I don't think so either. And I've seen all the cutscenes. Like, he's never. Yeah. I don't think he's mentioned again at all. Even, like, Abby's friends, as soon as they die, like, uh, Manny, I think his name was, when he dies, he's never mentioned ever again. Just dies and that's it. It's like, it's, it, they do the same thing of Joel. He dies, they have like a 10 second funeral scene, and then it's over. It's like, they, they have no time to mourn. They just, boom, 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 boom. Next plot, next plot, next plot. It's just, the pacing is fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. And then you fight them as Ellie to get revenge. As a player, you wouldn't know who's going to live or die, and there would be a lot more tension. In this game, whenever I saw somebody that we killed as Ellie, I was like, oh yeah, that's the dude we killed. And then I had no further interest in them as characters because I already knew it was going to happen to them. As it stands, this game is incapable of making us care about anyone who isn't Ellie or Abby. And a lot of angry gamers aren't <coughs> even like Abby. Oh, and I can't even blame them because Abby's half of the story is not fun to play. All I right. can remove large chunks of her story and the overall narrative will be unchanged. That's just what I, I said. I have no idea why we introduced another faction of evil murderers in the last three hours of the game. I think they did this to set them up for a third game. Like, pull these guys into the third game or something. I don't know. I honestly don't know what they were doing. 
these slavery marauders are actually way more interesting than the jungle cult that we fight for most of the game. And if you ask me, they should have just mixed these two factions together to create one threat that carries between Ellie and Abby's stories. This is just another sign of the game feeling really disjointed. So yeah, while I spent most of this video defending the story of this game, it still bothers me a lot. I cannot say that I love the whole story in this game. I love parts of it, but there are just as many things that I think do not work. I don't get mad when you kill a main character. I get mad when you waste my time. I get mad when story threads don't matter. And I get mad when I don't care about the side characters, and then they just end up getting killed to shock me. This death is not done for shock value. It yes, it is! It's pretty shocking. Very That's shocking. exactly what it you is. Can't... And mm -hmm. I get, I don't, I'm not mad a main character died. I get mad when a main character dies in a shitty way. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Same thing, I said, about, the same thing I said about Luke A shock Skywalker. value death is one that we forget about immediately. That's what happened with Joel. Why don't you understand this? He's contradicting himself way too fucking much. Dude, Joel's He's... death was literally for shock value to make the... Because, like, just watch people's reactions to Joel's death. What's the expression they all have? Shock. <laughs> It was done some to cry, shock you. But some, sh some are shocked. Drop and then drop. guess what? There's shock. no time to mourn Joel at all. There's like a 10 second funeral scene where Ellie's looking at Joel's grave and then she walks away and then I think that's she also breaks it. Down then Abby! Why not? Like, has a breakdown. Yeah, we down. get to play as Abby now. <laughs> Woohoo! Fun. Get to play as the girl that I killed just hate a... so much girl. when people call a story bad when it kills no. a main character. No one is <laughs> Marcus. This I know dude, we already brought this up this in the entire video, but serious contradicting himself more. Marcus, no one is saying Never. that. It's not. It's not about how. It's not the fact that he died. Again, I how many people were pissed when Arthur Morgan died? How many people were pissed when Lee from The Walking Dead died? I'm gonna keep saying those because you've yet to show me those examples. I will I will repeat what I just said earlier in the very beginning of the video. It wasn't the fact that he died, it was the execution of the death. <laughs> I the way it was handled. It was, was a I'm not mad a main character died. I'm mad a main character died in an unsatisfactory way. What is that Why is that so fucking hard to comprehend, dude? Here's a comparison that I think I a may or may not work in this situation. Judge him, but this being my first video to ever see from him. Or but it's like I already can't stand. Well, it's not that I can't stand him; it's that I can't stand this video. It just doesn't oh, make you, hang sense on, to real me, quick, man. What was Logan, it feels Logan, like the last Jedi all <gasps> over again. There were no, he I, fucking I, went I, there. He's, he's, oh, oh my god. god. You guys wanna know why I was bringing up the whole Luke Skywalker's up because he brings you a line in the video. Uh uh. He actually brought uh, you guys. Let's see, let's kidding. see what he has to say. Hold on. He actually brings Doesn't up the last Jedi in to me, man. It feels it like the last was... Jedi all over again. There were actual real reasons to not like that movie, but when it first came out, people were just mad because Luke Skywalker died. Everybody shut up. No. No, we don't want to shut up. What is it, Justice? What is it? Two, one. <laughs> Arthur Morgan again, dying in a pig's ass. <laughs> I, sound like, I, sound, I, I sound like that guy from Home Alone. You totally do. Joe Pesci? Yeah, is that his name? Oh, when he got shot in the balls? With the BB gun? No, that was yeah. Joe Pesci. Yeah, it was Joe Pesci. Yeah. <laughs> I sound like that guy. I sound like that guy. Like, like, <laughs> He's like, okay, you gotta act. You gotta act like you're in pain, but you can't cuss. This is a kids movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, really, I honestly think he he accidentally put in a couple f words in there, but they sort of half bleeped it out to where he, he was just speaking gibberish. Know. Yeah, I, you he, never know. If that, yeah, but, okay. but if he was, he did Listen, pretty well. Dude, he fucking brought up the last yeah. Jedi. Oh I know. I want to cuss right now myself, but now that you guys mention it, I'm gonna try. <laughs> now he just sounds like he's underwater. I know. <laughs> like Abby should have stayed. 
Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, that was perfect. Oh, that was awesome. Awesome. You're the best. He's drowning with, he's drowning with hatred. Oh, he's drowning man. with hatred. Oh, now he's sad. Yep. People were not angry that Luke Skywalker died, Marcus. I already brought this up earlier in the video. I already brought this up. Like, come on. Like, Marcus. I've seen some of your videos. You're a smart guy. You know why people didn't like his death. It wasn't just because he died. It was how he died. It was executed. It was... Executed. He died like a fucking punk. By himself. He, like a... he like... He, died in a he poofed and was like a way. fart in the wind. He just... All he did was have... <laughs> he, he, he literally died because he was too tired. Yeah, that's yeah. badass, man. He pretty much he pretty much died because he used his all the power I guess he had to basically sum up that force ghost, force hologram, whatever the hell you want to call it, over there to basically distract uh, Kylo Ren or Ben. And then after that, he just faded, like basically how Yoda faded in the original movie. You know, there's a lot of reasons why people dislike the Last Jedi. Luke's death is oh, not okay. even one of them, I'm honestly. My neck. There's a lot of problems with The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. only, there's only one good thing I could say about The Last Jedi. It was that fight scene with the, the yeah. Torn guards. That's the only thing I can really say I liked about that movie was that fight scene. But even that's good. highly flawed. Like, there's so oh, many yeah. bad choreography moments. Yeah. The, the disappearing weapon. <laughs> it sure as hell wasn't anything like the, the Mandalorian, which was actually... The unnecessary <laughs> spins, the missed cues, all this stuff. Anyway... Dude, come on. Why did you bring up this movie? I'm like, are you honestly trying to troll people? Like, come on. I th I think he is, honestly. Good lord. Because we can't kill a beloved character. Well, they can. Just not in the city of... <laughs> so you call Luke a beloved character, but you don't call Joel a beloved character. I just well, don't... I he don't just contradicted like himself! He already... He just admitted it! Well, because I mentioned earlier how Luke's more of the heroic type character compared to Joel. Because, you know, Luke doesn't do a whole lot of killing a lot of people. Joel does in the last... But he just said, we can't kill a beloved character in, like, a sarcastic way. Come on, dude. Now, real quick, let's take a second to look at things from a different perspective. <clears throat> let's go to an alternate universe. The year is 2013, and The Last of Us 1 has just come out. It features a doctor and his daughter in a post-apocalyptic world. The doctor's constantly trying to do the right thing, but the world is decaying so fast and it's hard for him to recognize right from wrong. Then at the end of the story, he finds a girl who's immune to the virus, but he realizes that he has to kill her to make a cure. And since the world is already looking really bleak, he decides that he has to make the hard choice to sacrifice this girl in order to try to save humanity. It's a tough choice, but he knows that he- Can I just say that these two look more like siblings than father and daughter? Yeah. yeah. I Sorry. Guess. I just wanted to point that out. That <laughs> you have to have a little... you have he to looks too young to be... He is one of the last people alive dad. who cares about mankind. But then, that little girl's dad kills him because humanity truly is selfish. And at the end of the day, people don't really want to be saved. Seems like a decent story to me. I could see that being in a video game. But then, a few years pass, and in this alternate universe, The Last of Us oh, Part boy, 2 comes out. And then we have to play part. as those other people. How dare Naughty Dog make me play as these lunatics? They were oh. clearly the villains of the last game. Dr. Abby's dad was the no, true they hero. Weren't. He wanted to save the world. They killed my dad, and now they live in this peaceful country town? Are you fucking kidding me? That's not fucking fair. I remember this part. In the what? Video too. <laughs> that's some, that's no, not no, what just, happened, just, though. Just, 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 just calm down, calm down, just, just calm down, calm down. It's okay. I'm trying it's okay. to remain it's calm. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. He does realize he just oh. made two different games. Not yeah, it's a completely different game. The same one. I honestly thought the point he was trying to make was replace Abby and her dad's characters with Joel and Ellie's characters in the first game. And now, like, just, just shift the characters ar around and then see if he will be outraged about the same thing. Of course they would. Of course they would, because we spend the entire first game with these characters, us learning about them and growing to care about them, and then in the second game, you completely backtrack on everything that you set up, 
and then you kill them off so quickly and nonchalantly and disrespect all over what they built and accomplished shadow over their legacies of course people are going to still be pissed off but the comparison you're making is that's not what fucking happened literally what you're describing is the story that the last of us 2 tried to make but failed at doing so i don't understand your point of his, well I let's put know. abby and the doctor as the playable oh. characters in the first game but when we get to the second game you have to play as those people's killers and people will be pissed <laughs> off over that right it's like that's not what happens though the example he's giving is there's time to process everything between the first game and the second game but with last of us 2 right now there is no time to process what the fuck just happened right exactly it's go you go from ellie straight to abby not like one game is like you play as abby and her father yeah the, yeah the yeah game we're now playing as ellie and joel yeah there's a huge Basically, time difference a huge there. time no, it's space back right there. Forth. you can process everything right <laughs> so his comparison back makes forth. no fucking sense joel exactly. is evil why would naughty dog try to make me feel bad for killing him wait now i have to play as his daughter are you kidding me she's a psychopath do you see how silly that sounds? I didn't even change the story. I just put it in a different order. My point is... Dude, you did not put it in a different order. You um, didn't. <laughs> all right, this guy's starting to make me psychotic. <laughs> oh, he's losing it. He's, he's dying. He's losing it. Man. We're almost done, Justice. Hang on. Two more minutes. Get the shotgun loaded. This game with the most surface I don't have a shotgun in my room. It's so machete. shallow the Drop way people machete. are talking about this story. How is it shallow? They're making good points. Say that I enjoyed about oh, sixty to seventy percent of this game, and the rest uh, either uh, bored uh, out of my fucking mind. The or fuck is that thing? What is so that? The, the fuck is that? That I enjoyed about ugly sixty to seventy percent. That looks like something out of the evil within. It really does. Uh, looks like wild, some though. shit from like Silent shit? Hill. It does. This game and the rest either bored me oh, my good fucking mind God. or made me angry. Like okay, he he, he, he enjoyed game. sixty to seventy percent of the game. Just let that sink in for a second. He enjoyed more than half of this game. Okay. So wait, you do realize that you play as Abby for like six to ten hours, right? That's like at least That's a good chunk of the game there. Yep. You admitted you didn't like it. So you're kind of contradicting yourself with that percentage, dude. So as a whole, did this game really justify its existence for me? Yeah, I don't really know. I'm going to say no. It didn't need to I, exist. I'm gonna... Shouldn't have happened. The idea shouldn't even been alive for a sequel at this point. I personally feel like this story did not really need to continue. Justice, justice is okay, he just said he didn't feel like this story needed to continue. I agree. It, it should have ended at the first game. I think everyone agrees with me there. I really because it had a game, but the twenty hours leading up to it kind of felt bloated and unsure of itself. I can't just forgive the mountain of dumb shit only because I love the ending. I have to look at the whole picture. You love the ending. <sighs> you love the ending. Just <laughs> I don't really care if you love or hate the game. I'm obviously okay, somewhere in, all, in the middle. Okay, what I do care about is how people talk about the media that they consume. Okay, because leaving. currently the conversations about this game are really not fun to engage with, and I'd like for that to change. <laughs> but anyway, we They're have very fun to engage with. Because number scores are really all some people care about, and scoring this game is kind of tough for me. Part of me wants to give it a six. And At this point, I'm not even seven. listening to him. I think about all the stuff I love, but then I remember the stuff that pisses me off. So for now... I'm going to give The Last of Us Part 2 a 6.5 out of 10. That's so uh, basically an average one day. Who knows? Bye. An average to good score, basically, is what he gave it. Like above average, basically, is what I would say. At least yeah, that's, that's too generous. I think this game is more along the lines of a 4 or 5. Mm, I'd give it a 3 the, uh, and a half to 4. I, I, well, I want to I wanna play... Uh, well, oh, overall, like, this was what infuriates me. Like, he was on point so early on in the video with talking about the gameplay and stuff. And there were a couple points he made about storytelling in his uh, spoiler part of the video, which I agree with. But, dude, 
Wow, you missed the mark on some very basic things. Like, saying that Joel's not a beloved character is probably the most baffling one to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, then saying I... that you think people were angry because they killed off the main character? You do, come on. You're, I'm sure you're a smart Gosh. guy. You know that's not why people were mad. I'll be honest. We, we crap on this a lot. We crapped on the video for the most part in the game. But there are some good like you said really josh there's a lot of bad but there's some sparkles of good in there and i think we can all agree that for instance the graphics look amazing in that game oh like, absolutely absolutely yeah. amazing. that's one thing that's undeniable the graphic just like the, with the, the original graphics, game graphics are phenomenal yeah. well that, we almost expect that at this point like of course it's not going to look bad and we mentioned the gameplay was pretty decent. It seemed decent from what we were watching and what he was talking about. So, it looked fine. Yeah. It doesn't look groundbreaking or amazing. It looks fine. Yeah. It looks Very like basic, game. like the first game. Yeah. The yeah. animations look amazing. The kill animations. Mm -hmm. and I guess oh, boy. Look the zombies look of, amazing. Like, wow. And then you got, like, the some of the scenes with Joel before his... Yeah, you got some of the flashbacks. Yeah, it's acted nice. very well. I'll I'll give yeah, major props good. to all the voice actors. They did an excellent, yeah, excellent job. Acting. My it issue is weird, the but... writing, yeah. which is kind of like the core of any story, and the writing sucked, dude. Like, come remember on. remember the bigot sandwich scene? I was just like, uh, did she really say <laughs> there's that? There's literally a scene in the game where she like. I never even heard someone use the term bigot in real life. <laughs> I, or, oh, my sister or calls me that all the time. Or so, putting it, a sandwich in it. It's kind of weird. Bigot sandwich? Like, Do you guys want I a bigot sandwich before. for lunch? <laughs> yeah, no one, no one talks oh, like that. Oh, yeah, brother. Overall, yeah, brother. look, I, I love your videos, Marcus, and I think a lot of them are really good. I really enjoyed, like, your Spider-Man ones, your Harry Potter videos, all those well, excellent, excellent videos, too. but... I honestly, I hate to say this, but I honestly think you need to stick to movie reviews and not game reviews. Yep. Because honestly, like, you kept comparing this game to movies. And, and Winnie the Pooh. And fucking Winnie the Pooh. Like, if Why you're going to try to do a comparison, do what we did. Compare a game review to other games. Or to a similar genre in a movie or TV show, like The Walking Dead, I mean, for yeah. instance. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. Gosh, it's like what you say with Angry Joe. He should stick to game reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Angry Joe is good at game reviews. He sucks at movie reviews. You know what I mean? My dad, Everyone my dad, has their own strengths and weaknesses. My dad, I watched the guy's video. Yeah, everyone has their opinion. Review for Yakuza Zero. I but couldn't take him seriously whatsoever. And I know that's the point, but I, I'm not watching another one. Speaking of, of Angry yet. Joe, so in my last, uh, in our last rant video, I sort of threw some shade at him mm. at the beginning because he said that. He, the guy that leaked the footage should just be sued without knowing anything behind the context. The reason why I threw shade at Angry Joe like that is because when you have a large following like that, and then without knowing anything within the context, without doing any research as to what happened, why it got leaked, whatever the case may be, it's very dangerous to just be like, just sue his ass into oblivion, I don't care, just sue him, just sue him. Like, that's guilty before proven innocent. You know what I mean? You need to look at everything behind the scenes before saying stuff like that. That's why I threw shit at him at the beginning. But I will say this. I fully support Angry Joe for his opinion on The Last of Us because he's just yeah. as pissed off as we are. In fact, I want to show you guys yeah. this real quickly. He hits the nail on the head in this one. I'm not even going to pause this because it's perfect. But if you do want to kill Joe... That's not why we dislike the story. It's how you do it. You get that through your thick fucking skull. It's not that hard of a concept. How you kill a beloved character is important. Especially if that character is the main character that people care about. Nobody cares about Abby! <laughs> Especially when she murders your favorite character. And you do it in such a shitty way. And then act surprised when people are angry and resentful after seven years of waiting. You act fucking surprised. If you act surprised, you might be a bit slow. If that offends you, if you're offended. But you might be a bit slow if you're surprised 
at what is going on right now with the opinion of The Last of Us 2. Yes. Bravo. He hit the tooth on the nail right there. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> like oh he, my God. he brought up a lot of the same stuff we did. Oh, and this guy, I fucking love this dude. Is this the whole death scene? Um, this whole thing right here, no. These this is like a compilation of his rants throughout throughout oh, okay. it. Oh wow. I wanna okay. see his reaction to when he lets Abby die. Those are like the funniest things I've seen of his videos. <laughs> I haven't seen this. Because so he's like, to... fucking die! I, I know. And he, and he like cheers and shit. I'm like, oh god, I love you, Tyler. Not in a gay way, but an awesome way. Oh, no homo. Stop, you fucking ogre. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> Replay it. I didn't. I didn't hear it. She's the ogre. Stop. Stop. Dead. Oh, Stop you fucking ogre. <laughs> yep. I Anthony, fucking love we him. No longer have to drink. You can have the beer to yourself. Something absolutely fucking retarded. Look at how many comments he's getting. Hey, two girls having sex and smoking weed, and then right after, let's kill Joel. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Well, let's, guys, let's do something absolutely fucking retarded real quick. Guys, get this, okay? We're going to do something so edgy. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have two girls having right. sex, smoking weed, and then right after, let's kill Joel. Boom. It's a winner. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant! Why didn't we think of that the first time? Let's do it! Marcus, you mean to tell me that that was wonderful? The story is wonderful now? <laughs> Can I mute her audio? <laughs> he doesn't even want to talk to her. He doesn't want to hear her voice. She is almost as big as him. <laughs> I'm telling, you, I'm telling you, man, she's taking those damn steroids, I swear. She has to be. Like, how do you get this buff in an apocalyptic world like this? Exactly. Unless you had some workout. Push ups and sit ups, but even then, you're probably going to need the roids. I feel like it's like a. That's just what anime does. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! That's, that's <laughs> going to blow in her! Well deserved! Oh uh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> you know, honestly, if I were- oh god. Hold on. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! We did it! We won! Encore! Monster thing! Encore! 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 I can't keep doing this. Shut up, bitch. I just want to hear- Shut up, bitch. Shut up, bitch. Shut up, bitch. Steroid win. Look, look, look. I'm just going to wear my socks. Size in What is he doing? Oh, my God. He's comparing his biceps. What do you mean? Like, dude, I've been looking for 12 years, man. Yeah. Peter. Put it the fuck in me. Bitch. Put it in me, bitch. Fucking bitch. Killer. Killer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, again, so Marcus, I'm a huge fan of your videos and I still am. It's just that video in particular, lots of people wanted me to respond to it and there's so many things that you got right, but large majority of things you just got vastly incorrect. I hope this at least puts some perspective as to why people are angry. If you watch this all the way to the end, I really appreciate it and I hope you guys would consider subscribing hitting that like button, and uh, if you guys want us to respond or watch videos or talk about anything else, let us know in the comments. And until then, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Later, brother. Bye-bye. Yeah. What do you do to you? Later, brother. For Joel!